Well, welcome to what I hope will be a very special few hours. Over the next period of time, we're going to re-watch that memorable night in Slovakia where GB played France. You all know the outcome. It was such a special night for GB ice hockey. We're going to reflect with many people indeed over the next couple of hours. But first of all, three very special members of staff. The coaching staff, Pete Russell, Adam Keefe and Corey Nielsen. And, and Peter, I want to start with you. I wonder what sort of message... What, what the sort of things did you say to the guys as they went onto the ice just before the guys came onto the ice? What sort of thing did you say? I think the guys have been waiting for this game the whole tournament. Um, we didn't really need to say much. We knew it was the peak end, and this was their chance to make history. And uh, I had a really good feeling. So did the rest of the guys. So we were pretty confident something was going to go good that day. Akifa, how does it work? You know, with with the three of you, do you all have? key assets to, to, to bring ahead of face-off? Does one talk more than the other? What What's the sort of way things work out with you all there, just a, ahead of a game? Well, I think all three of us kind of discussed on uh, how we want to go about the game. And, uh, but, you know, Pete does his thing for the game and kind of rally the troops and get them ready to go. And I think he just touched on it there. The whole tournament, uh, the message was about the peak end and uh, that big building, building towards this game here in particular. Uh, so we were pretty confident if we got here and we learned a lot of lessons along the way that we did, uh, we'd have success in this game. Uh, Corey, I remember after the, the, the Hungary tournament, we spoke on the ice uh, when, when GB got promoted and I said it will be an experience and, and you laughed and said, yes, it will be an, an experience. What sort of experience was it in general for you and the, the British players? How, how can you sum up that experience? Well, obviously, uh, it's the highest level of hockey. It's even higher in the NHL with the, the players that came over. So uh, it, was, it was an incredible test, not only for the players uh, playing against guys who were bigger, faster, stronger, uh, and more skilled, but also for the coaches to uh, work together to construct some kind of game plan that would allow us to compete. So it was uh, it was a monumental test, but uh, I thought we, we did a pretty good job. Pete, we've just seen you on the screen there moments before for face off. Are you are you nervous at this moment, or do you not have nerves as a coach? I don't know. I think these days I'm pro. I don't know. They'll tell you more. I think I'm better in these games than I am in some other games. Um, I kind of have a way of being calm when I have to be calm sometimes. And uh, I think this game, I just had a feeling that it was kind of, you know, some people don't believe in it. I think sometimes destiny's written and I had a feeling that uh, we'd stuck together the whole time. We had a real tough time. I thought as coaches and as players and as a management team, we'd done really well through a lot of adversity. There was some ups and downs and we took control of it. and. We kept it away from everybody and uh, I, I just felt that this was a chance that I believed that I've known the players for so long that they would pull something out of this game. I really believed that. So I was looking forward to it. Yeah. OK, let's just pause now because there's a, a really key moment at the start, a big chance for GB. With the shot, looking for a deflection in front from Bozon. Here's Lake trying to chop on it against Heck Foy, kept in by Bozon. Back to the line. Walking in, oh, Goodhig with the shot, and that was blocked by Davis, and Davis has a lane. Ben Davis churning up the middle, Ben Davis in all alone, Ben Davis drops it behind, I'm not sure if he thought right I don't know what you say about that one. Yeah. <laughs> well, 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 we'll talk to Benny later, but am I right in thinking that he thought we were playing in, in blue? Is that the true story, anyone know? I, I, I don't know what he was thinking there, but um, it's funny, because I remember, I was trying to think about the game, and I couldn't remember when I knew I was coming on here first. But I remember thinking we had a few chances at times, and I forgot about that. I think Ben thought somebody was behind him. I heard he's learning yeah. French, so maybe somebody said something and he was floating it back to him. I don't, I don't know, but that was a. I think he was keeping it for the right moment. Uh, absolutely. Uh, I want to talk about how Pete is before a game with you two boys in a minute, but we've just seen a great save at the other end from, from Ben Bounds. Uh, just talk us through this one, Kiefer. Honestly, I was just watching while people talking there. Uh, you go down and all of a sudden we have that, that great eight scoring chance on the breakaway from Ben and then go right back the other way and those are things that could sing in the game. Obviously a big stage by uh, Ben Down. Kind of keep it even. 
Uh, Corey, uh, just just going on to what we touched on with, with Pete, he said he thinks he's changed maybe as a coach. Is he is he less excitable now, or do you have to rein him in a bit sometimes? <laughs> um, well, Pete and I are completely different in a lot of ways. Obviously, we're very good friends, but yeah, he's uh, he's very emotional. Um, but uh, he's he has a great ability to uh, retain an abundance of knowledge when he's when he's speaking. Uh, so he gets all he gets to most of his points, and and uh, which is really really tough when you're trying to get, condense things really quickly to get to your players. So um, yeah, at times you have to to rein him in, and at times he has to push me to uh, be a little bit more uh, emotional. What are the, the feelings, Pete, you know, the way you, you settled down in the game? How, how did you feel you settled down in the early moments of the game? Yeah, we, 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 I, do you know what? I, I remember we were, they were in a 1-3-1 one, one a lot and we, we worked in a breakout. and We tried a couple of things that we didn't need to worry about in the other games because we knew we'd have the puck more. And I was just thinking about this, so we talked about bumping it back and kicking to the side with a switch. Do you know what? I'm watching that. It never really worked for us, to be perfectly honest. We're <laughs> trying it, but um, you know, but it was just that I just think in there we, we really had confidence before that game to think we were going to have the puck, and probably at the time when Corey and Adam and I were talking, I don't think we really thought about that. I just think we thought, oh, sometimes they come aggressive with two guys, sometimes they go in a one-three-one, uh, and, and you know, I think that we actually thinking about it now, we actually believe we're going to have the puck more, and I think that's really. Pretty confident to think like that at that level of tournament to think that we're going to have the puck. And uh, I don't think we're far wrong in this game because uh, I know how the game went, but I didn't think, you know, the way the game was at a certain point you should have been like that. But, uh, you know, I, th I thought we looked like a team that was willing to do what it took. Uh, there's, a, there's a bit here that I think Paul Ladies just mentioned in the commentary where we said GB had six players on the ice for a few seconds. Do any of you remember that? No, that's a lie. He's, nope. he's, he's obviously seen that wrong. We would never <laughs> that. Um, I mean, it's an interesting question, though, in terms of controlling a bench. Is it, Kiefer, is it harder to, to control a bench in a high emotional game like this in, in a normal run of a mill game? Uh, I think certainly for, for me sometimes, uh, personally, when things get uh, emotional on the bench and kind of chaotic, that. Uh, you can kind of lose sight of who's up next, and the players the players will let you know when when they want to know who's up, and uh, you know they they want to make sure that they're getting things going. So uh, you want to be organized in those times, and sometimes it's difficult, but uh, you know, for the most part, uh, the players kind of take care of you in, in those moments. Uh, Pete, you said after the game, I remember quite clearly that you you at the timeout when GB was three 0 down, we're jumping ahead a bit here, but. You won't be with us later, sadly, to see that bit. But you said you looked in the players' eyes and you only saw one team that was going to win. You were three 0 down at that point. Is that is that true? You you really believed it, even though you're three 0 down, that your guys could turn it around? Yeah, it was. Uh, you know, do you know something? You're always hoping. You must be optimistic. But I'm a big believer in experience, and we've been in a hole before the year before, and far away out of that. And, um, I think it was just good at the time that that came into my mind to think what I was going to say because I think it was the right time to call a timeout. We're in one, you know. We just buckled a little bit and they scored two quick goals. And I, I, when I said to them, "I bet we've been here before and there's a lot more time in this clock than there was in the one last year," and uh, you could see them look up and kind of got a little bit of jump about them. You could see they they hadn't gave up. And I think you know when somebody gave up, there's no eye contact. Um, Body language was poor. It wasn't like that. They just kind of looked at each other and away they went again. Um, and well, at that moment, we just talked about just being aggressive with them without the puck. Don't sit. Just you know, push. Get the next one. Try and make it a two-goal game. Then if we get another one, it's a one-goal game. And we've all coached those teams when you get in that situation. And when you're that team leading and they start biting away at your lead, it's not a good thing in a bench. It's tough to try and pull teams out of that. And uh, Obviously, they couldn't, and uh, we kept everybody going. Cody kept the D going, Keith and I kept the forwards going. Um, we just tried to be positive, and I thought the one thing that I liked about the three of us in that week was, or the 16 weeks it felt like, was uh, we we were very positive the whole time. We went, we didn't, uh, we made a deal not to get negative um, and try and pick the good things out of the team because if we 
picked all the bad things out in that tournament and created that environment and we got to a moment like that that would never have happened for us so uh, I think that's a big thing for everybody that that happened. Corey, um, what is it about these these British players? You've developed a lot of them in, in Nottingham originally in your time and, and they've come into the GB programme. What is it that makes them able to achieve, you know, the feats that they have done in the last few years? Uh, complete and utter willingness. Um, if Pete told them to go and run in front of a car, they, they'd probably do it. They'll do whatever you tell them whenever you tell them to do it. Uh, they all work hard. They're all desperate. You watch the, the play. You just saw uh, Davy Phillips just dive headfirst in front of a, a slap shot that was would have been in, but uh, he blocked it from going in. You see all... Uh, I work primarily with the defensemen. They're all like that. The Stevie Lees and Richies and all these guys. They're just blocking shots, being desperate. Uh, tell them to dump the puck to create energy. They dump the puck to create energy. They tell them to shoot the puck and go to the net. They'll do that. It's just um, we've all had great teams, which we've we've coached. We've all had very coachable teams, but it's it's hard to compare any of those teams with the the level of um, the level of the Brits. They just do it better. Yeah, I think coming up is, is a great example of, of what you're talking about. And this is Billingsley's uh, block with his bum. Uh, I think it's this one coming out right now. I mean, that's that's dedication. There you go. Yep. That's that's a great great stop. Um, you, you, you make a good point about the boys as well, uh, guys. Uh, Pete, you might not remember this, but we mic'd <laughs> up uh, Davy Phillips. In fact, there's Davy giving Billingsley a high five. We mic'd up Davy Phillips uh, when... Uh, we were in, uh, it was Lithuania, I think, when Pete was a assistant coach. Uh, and Davy Phillips said to you, Pete, uh, on Mike, you know, when he was it was a training session, he said, "Can you come and give me a team talk again? Uh, because I'll uh, throw the throw my face in front of a puck, something along those lines." There, uh, but but Corey summed it up there. You know, that they're willing to go through it for the for you guys for the coaching staff. Uh, and Davy said there, "I'll throw my face in front of a puck," and and then yeah, on the biggest of stage. Uh, Davy did it, and at the top flight of, of World Championship uh, ice hockey. Uh, Kiefer, what, what did you think about the start? I mean, it was such a big game. Were the were the nerves on the bench at all? Uh, it's hard to remember that exact moment, but I imagine there was a level of nerves. I mean, it was a, it was a you know, win or go home uh, mentality. So with that brings nerves, but nerves is not necessarily a bad thing. I think guys kind of get excited and, and rise to the occasion in, in those moments. Obviously, the way the game went initially didn't go our way, but I think from that time out and, and from that first goal for uh, GB, everybody seemed to rally and uh, it didn't seem like it was going to go any other way from that point on. Uh, Pete, that the schedule kind of worked in your favour. You had a day off and and then played. France played the, the night before. Do you think that had any bearing on on the proceedings of the of the whole evening? Yeah, I think especially the last thirty minutes, maybe twenty. Especially the last period, uh, they, they looked as if they were getting a little bit heavy legged. And because um, they're quick, they're a fast team. They get. I think guys that played in NHL, KHL, Swiss League, you know, the SHL, they, they are real hockey players, you know, they, they're a real team on paper. Um, and I just thought as the game went on, I just remember, like, uh, it was hard for some guys to make an impact in that tournament, you know, especially offensive guys. And I don't know if the rest of the guys agree, but I just remember that, like, uh, you know, the one line who scored all the goals of a great fans and Dowdy and Hammond. But I remember Pellini coming to life a little bit in that game and looking as if he had more of a jump. And I think part of that was conditioning and, you know, and we, we kept going and you could just see us starting to look as if we were really being able to move more, you know, and it, it was just probably the biggest thing in that, that tournament is you, until you go there, uh, you know they're good, but you don't realise how good those teams are. You know, it's, it's another planet. Um, and I think the whole tournament was just how the guys stuck together. I, I, I just think that's that's what it's all about, you know. And I think you need character and you need guys that people first people, and we had the vast majority of people first people. You know, I think that's a good thing. Keith, I mean, was there a moment when you felt that 
the boys, I mean, in, in terms of like they were there, in terms of, you know, the first game against Germany was a 3-1 loss and they acquitted themselves really well. I think next came Denmark, where perhaps if there was one criticism, it was that performance. And that might be, you might disagree, but that was probably the only big disappointment because that was quickly followed off memory, I think, by a stunning performance against USA, where it was 1-1 at one point and only losing 6-3. Was there a moment where you think, you know, maybe other people at the tournament went, oh, hang on a minute, GB aren't here just to make up the numbers? Well, I think uh, I think that statement was made versus Germany, the Austria. Uh, I thought we had a great game versus Germany. Then we played Canada the next game. Uh, obviously, didn't go our way. But, I mean, we're talking about another level of, of nation that we were playing against there. Uh, I thought that given the circumstances, the guys handled it real well. Uh, who they were playing against. And then, you're right, the Denmark game was probably the only disappointing game from a performance standpoint from from our team. Uh, I thought every other game, the guys emptied the tank. And I think that if, if I could put my thumb on one game, after that Denmark game, the USA game kind of gave us that confidence uh, to keep going. Uh, you know, we were in that, uh, we got peppered with shots, and I'm sure Bouncy saw more shots than he's ever saw against the USA team. But uh, I thought that game kind of gave us that confidence to kind of bounce back and, and keep going here throughout this tournament. Corey, we're about to very shortly see a, a chance for Hammond, I think. You actually, you know, before the goals went in for France, fair to say you probably had, you know, with a better team, you had some good chances, and we're going to see some more in the second part of the first period, but you, you actually had some great chances in that first period, if you remember. Uh, it looks pretty 50-50 to me uh, right now. It's two teams that uh, that are working hard, both, um, yeah, playing really well. It, it, I don't see a whole lot really in it, um, but yeah, you can tell... Uh, there's a lot of skill level on that France team and there's just so much uh, desperation like the little details that a, a lay person kind of wouldn't notice but as coaches we notice what a, what a chance there um, mm. is our angles our sticks um, you know defensive positions and the guys just they just do such a great job. Yeah that was the chance I think I was talking about there from, from Hammond. Uh, yeah. Pete I mean what can you can you put into words personally for you what it meant to leave GB at the the biggest tournament you know in in World Championship ice hockey? Um, I don't know. I really, I think it was a great experience, but I think there's been a lot of great experiences, and you know, and I think personally at that time, for a big part of that trip, my head wasn't there anyway. It was kind of all over the place, you know, and it was. That was a tough personal part of my life, the things that were going on at home. And uh, I think uh, as the week as it went on, it got better because things were calming down and some such. And I was getting away from the other stuff. And then I just felt the the biggest thing for us is uh, when uh, when you get put in a job and people don't think you should get the job, and then uh, you bring some people in and people don't think uh, you brought in the right people and. You pick a team and people think you picked the wrong team as well, never mind the staff, and then everybody sticks together and then uh, works together off the same page and we, we developed a philosophy of playing fast if we can and creating chaos and the full check and we, we stuck with it. And the biggest thing for me in the tournament was that we never lost sight of what we wanted. We never changed and panicked. We just said, no, no, we'll keep going. And we, we did discuss things. We talked, Corey, Adam and I talked, oh, should we... Would you think, oh, maybe we should change stuff? I don't think we, and I was like, no, I don't think we should. And they agreed, we've got to stay what we are. And uh, I think I was really proud to see us uh, win that game playing the hockey that got us there, to be honest. If I think that was the big thing for me. Um, if I remember it, I think two of the goals were created off the full check. And uh, Ben O'Connor made a great pinch, I think, in the second goal, a dangerous pinch, because if it went in the back of him in the blue line, the guy was gone. And he picked it off and made a great pass. Then uh, the third goal, uh, fans again, a guy that basically got us there with a big moment, does another big moment. Like that, for me, that was an amazing goal. You know, what he to turn out the low zone, I think he turned out on his backhand and shelved it. And then the biggest thing for me in the whole tournament was you talk about losing the bench of your mind. When I put Ben Davis and John on, I had lost where the change up was because we lost Mosey and there was we not a lot of bodies we felt at that moment were overtime guys and then 
to, and I just looked at two guys in front of me. I knew they could skate. They were good defensively and they would work hard. And I think the best part was, uh, for me, that what got us there through what Corey said, hard work and desire. The two guys that made the goal and scored the goal, that's what they are. You know, hard work mm. and desire. And it's funny how if you stick at something, sometimes karma comes your way. And, and I think it was just amazing. I think for everybody, it's been an unbelievable experience for me. I've grew massively in the last five years as a person, I think. And the players have as a team. There's been 50-odd players. Um, we've had a mass core stay with us in it. The coaching team changed once, but now we have a solid coaching team that's stuck together. And we've had a lot of fun with each other. I'm sure we get in each other's nerves at times. I mean, I'm pretty easy to get on with, but I think they two are difficult at times. Um, <laughs> you know, I think uh, I think the players have been uh, amazing, every one of them, and you know, and it's been uh, Andy Buxton, you know, I think and Andy French, especially all the work to put in, Chris and you guys. It's been brilliant. It was good. You know, I said in an interview last week when you come off in those tournaments and you've done something, you see the people off the ice, how happy they are and how proud they are. Mm. Um, mm. When you're a coach, I, I look at things like that. That makes me happy to see other people happy. And uh, I think we, we managed to do that. We were happy. Everybody was happy. And I think uh, if GB have got a great reputation out of it, and the reputation they have is what Corey and Adam were talking about as well, is we're organised, we work hard, and we never give up. And everybody, I know in Germany, Corey will tell you, that they all ask about it. They think it's amazing. They think it's an amazing story. And uh, I think the guys deserve everything. You know, it's good for them and good for everybody. Wonderful. Well, this is a great way to leave it with you three guys. And I hope you don't, don't mind me saying, Pete, that phone call, what was it, that Christmas six years ago from Andy French and, and Jim Anderson, the best phone call that Ice Hockey UK, I think, have, have ever made. Uh, but thanks for joining us, guys. And I hope you enjoyed the last few minutes of, of looking back and making some memories. What do you Thank think you. of my haircut, Chris? <laughs> it's great, mate. I, I realise it's it's self done, isn't it? DIY. I cut Amazing. this myself. So if anybody on the outside there wants a cut, just give me a call. I'll talk you through it. Well, to take us through to the end of the first period, I'm sure you can tell any moment now. We're being joined by Matthew Myers, Davy Phillips, and Taffy. Jason Ellery. Guys, thanks a lot for joining us. Hope you're going to enjoy uh, the next Thank few you. minutes. Okay. So what Took about... Red. <laughs> Say that again, <laughs> Davey. Your line broke up. If you had this man in British ice hockey, you took a slap shot straight off the head. <laughs> that, was, that, was you, wasn't it? that was you, wasn't it? I didn't do it, no. no Who was it? Was it I was on the bench, worried if he was still alive or not. <laughs> I noticed a bit earlier as well you gave a high five to uh, Billingsley who, who stopped one with his backside. Yeah, it was a good block. Uh, Matthew, does that kind of typify what we've started on here? Does that typify the, the, the GB spirit? You, you guys will do any, and we'll see more examples as the game goes on. You guys do anything to, to win a game of hockey? Are you saying we'll see more examples of us without the puck and having to block shots? I'm sure, I'm sure we will. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, I mean, is that is that a point? You know what? You know that that where's that drive and determination come from? Well, I mean, I'm not very good at blocking shots. I don't really like it, but lots of the guys who you know do a lot of shot blocking are, are, are amazing at it, and it, it certainly has helped us over the last um, couple of um, tournaments to get to where we where we have. A uh, big chance there for, for Liam Kirk. I wonder, Davey, what sort of tournament you thought he had. That The young star, obviously, NHL draft pick. He really looked at home on the, the big international stage, didn't he, Davey? Yeah, brilliant uh, for such a young age to go play at that um, level and calibre. But you could tell he'd coming off a good season from the OHL and full of confidence. Uh, Taffy, I'll bring you in now. Uh, if, if you, you know, what about for you going into this game? How, how you know, you, you're the one that is around the dressing room. Just so we see this chance again. I mean, he created the chance himself. It was superbly done. Uh, but, but Taffy, you're one who's been around dressing rooms for so many years. Was the atmosphere of the the, the, the night of the France game? How was it? Can you put it into words? Uh, pretty upbeat, to be honest. Um, you know. Boys are, you know, the you know usually relaxed and stuff like that before the game, and 
you know, just going by their uh, game routines and stuff, you know, they, there's no nerves, I don't think. I think they were just looking forward to playing the game. Matthew, what, what sort of game was it like to play in? Just just talk us through your roll of emotions from a steady first period, then you find yourself 3-0 down, then into true GB style, you come back in it. What, what were the emotions like during the game? Honestly, I really can't remember what was <laughs> going through my head during the game, to be honest. Um, I did remember, you know, the first period when we, when we were playing, we, um, we did feel a lot, a lot more comfortable um, in the game, you know, in the other games, the, the, the standard of hockey, you know, the teams, kind of the US, uh, Denmark, they're all so good, you know, sometimes you feel like you're just chasing the tail, whereas this one we did, you know, create more chances, have more puck and, um, you know, made it more like a hockey game, to be honest. And then, obviously, it's, you know, we, we conceded three fairly quick goals and put us right behind the eight ball and in a tournament where you don't score very many goals, you're thinking, you know, is this, you know, is this going to be the end of the road for us? But like, like, uh, like the boys do all the time, we uh, we had another, I don't know, maybe 35 minutes to go. We give her our best shot. And luckily, we, we managed to pull it back. So, Davey, I'm, I'm intrigued to get your thoughts about how good these these nations were. I remember speaking to some of the guys on the bus after maybe Canada or the USA game when they were just like, before you kind of even anticipated what they were going to do, they'd already done it. They were that quick. It might have been Matthew that said it, but but just how good were they and how special was it playing on the ice of same as the Canadians of Patrick Kane of, of USA? How how good was it? It was brilliant, amazing experience to go test ourselves against you know some top NHL players, and I thought we did an excellent showing of ourselves and did out uh, the team and the country proud. Um, yeah, the, that game against Canada, the score was pretty high, but I think we did good against America. That one, too big of a scoreline. Uh, Taffy, going to talk what, about Third time I've had a meaning since lockdown. <laughs> that, that's okay. We can still hear you. That, that's the main thing. Or we'll try and do some sign language or something. Uh, uh, Taffy, uh, you know, what, just just describe us through. I'm keen to talk about your role as as, as equipment manager. Just how different was it to, to anything you've experienced before, with whether it be club or country? Um, it was totally different, you know, from going from the two pools below um, up to this top pool, seeing all the other equipment managers, how they set up and stuff like that. It was just full on, full on every day. It was, you know, um, just you, you, you just you just can't say how it was like because it was so surreal you know how busy these guys are behind the scenes and stuff you know it's uh yeah i just got just can't just can't explain it because it's different mm. totally different, different world for it all a lot yeah of, i mean and the way things had to be had to be like yeah it was very strict and certain things weren't they oh yeah yeah right. you set up in your room and you know Things had to be on time, like laundry and stuff after games and stuff like that. You know, couldn't even get in the building where you part. It was just everything was on, you know, spot on everything. Yeah, I mean, Matthew, I'm interested to sort of when was there a moment when you realised, well, we're really here. I remember when we walked into the into the rink for the first time, and to get to the GB room, you had to go past Canada's, um, which which was right next to GB's, and, and suddenly I went, wow. In my opinion, you know, I was like, crumbs, it's really happening. You know what? What about for you? Was there a moment when you were like, "Pro, this is this is really happening"? Cool crumbs. Um, I think um, I think probably like you said when we first entered the building, and I think maybe Canada might have been practicing. A few of the boys went out to um, mm. to like watch practice, and you know, with all due respect, normally we we step out. You know, we arrive at the rink, we go and have a look at the rink, and you got you know, with all due respect, like Lithuania practicing, and now you got. Canada practicing, you know what I mean? Like Tat just said, you can't compare them. It's so extreme the difference between this level, the level below, and the level below that from where we came from in the last few years. It's uh, it's bonkers, really. But um, yeah, I think you know what? When when we first when we went up, 
And then when we got there, we all knew, let's go have a laugh, have fun, work hard, see what happens at the end of the tournament. There was no pressure on us. So we just did that. We went, we went, you know, we had a laugh right from the get go. We were laughing and joking, you know, and, um, and I think uh, I think that definitely helped us through the tournament because it, you could beat up on yourselves after losing eight nothing, nine nothing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But you know, it was like water off a duck's back for us, and um, and we, we had fun with it and uh, and enjoyed the uh, the entire experience. Yeah, that's a good point, Matthew. Davey, is is that one of the keys to your success? You, as a group, you don't te- take each other, you don't take yourselves too seriously, and that's not to say you're not serious about ice hockey because you are. But you know, there's no prima donnas. You know, you you like to have a smile on your face, and is is that one of the key things do you think to the GB ethos and why you've been so successful? Yeah, a lot of us have been on that team for a number of years now and become good friends. And it's a long time to be away from your friends and family. So you know, for that time you've got to be that when you are away that amount of time. You, you know, it's important to have fun every day, or else it can really become a long trip and a bit of a drag, like I said, away from your, um, from your family. So to go through, I think it was there like five or six weeks, it's a long time to be away. And when you get on with everyone that well, you know, it's, it makes the trip become a lot much funner. A couple of good chances there, uh, Matthew. Did, did you feel, I mean, I know it didn't go your way in at some points in the second period, but did you feel from the start you were well in this game? Can you remember much about how the game panned? And I know you said there's things that you can't remember, but now you're seeing it back. Is it coming back to you about how it was a good first period? Yeah, it was a, it was a good first period. I think um, it was 0-0 at the end of the first, which was, you know, for every period we got through without conceding the goal was an excellent period for us in that tournament. So uh, we would have been happy with that. And um you know, France had some have had some good chances. We've had some, you know, big blocks. There's one there. We had Billingsley with the the back door empty. That was a great block. You know, we could have been a few goals down, but then, like like you've said, we've had you know two breakaways already. Um, we've had some you know back door garbage attempts, which you know we haven't converted on. But it it was a fairly even period. I would say probably France were maybe slightly stronger. But again, I think that's probably natural. They've been in that tournament for 13 years. They've had guys playing it, playing these type of games. Um, huge hit there by Davey. Uh, nice that's game, a, nice that's a big... Yeah, Davey, that what do you remember hit. about that? Yeah, Davey, what do you remember? Did when did you see either guy up? Um, I seen him when he crossed the blue. I saw him start to drift across to Ben's side, and I thought, I better hit him quick. Or else he's going to get round Ben. He's got a lot of speed. Ben's going backwards. His skates are broken. And I thought, oh, I've got to wait him here. <laughs> this is a chance here, I think. That's a chance from, from Shields there. Uh, hopefully, again, on this is a, the rebound as well, as we're talking about how there's some, some good attempts in, in front of goal that, that you guys had. Uh, this is a hit. No, he's, uh, he, as he crossed the blue, he. He just looked down for a split second there to shoot it, and I thought, make a little quick step across with his lateral movement and um, make contact with him. But I think he might have been on like one leg or something because he he did go down a bit easy. And I, um, I'm not the biggest, or, sorry, the strongest of guys, but um, I thought I better go down as well because you never know with the refereeing in international hockey on open ice hits. Mm. That's a good point. Did you feel, Double IHF, we're taught that it's it's going to be less physical. Did you feel, especially in this game, because we'll see a hit by Stevie near the end of the period, did you feel the officials let quite a lot go? It felt that way from watching from the stands. Really, and I thought, literally, every penalty was a penalty. You couldn't have argued it either way. I, I couldn't have thought it could have been any better. Um, like I said, with open ice hits, you never quite... I, I think I think the the officiating was the best we've seen, um, okay. and like Dave said, the, penal, the penalties were penalties, but they did let a lot of stuff go, a lot of argy bargy go. I mean, you watch the overtime period when you get it, get there. Um, I think we ended up burying two guys into our net, um, mm. and nothing mm. called, nothing called. And um, you know, in in other tournaments, they would hundred percent be penalties in overtime, and 
you know, we'd be killing to try and sa save our lives there. But um, the, the refing was uh, the refing was really good. I'll come to you, Taffy. I, I know we're just a bit ahead of time now, but you know, do you remember what the, the feeling was in the dressing room after this first period? Must win game, nil nil scoreline. Do you remember, you know, what the feelings were, were like and the conversations? Oh yeah, the, the boys. The boys are on the same page, you know. You know, come on, boys, we can do this. You know, we're we're uh, skating with them, we're playing with them. You know, both both teams had chances. You know, both teams could have scored a couple of goals. Um, yeah. You know, just keep going the same way. Um, like, like Davy's big hit there was huge, I think. Um, but uh, yeah, everybody was upbeat. You know. Even when we went down a couple of goals, that you know, there was, you know, that belief was still there. Mm. Matthew, so GB won another. Sorry, carry on, Taffy. You know, the camaraderie in the room is like a big family, and everybody just knows what to do, who to speak, and you know, John would speak up, Benny would, uh, Ben O'Connor would speak up, you know, Dowdy would speak up. You know, it's it's all it's you know, everyone knows what to say. We'll probably just watch this last bit of footage uh, because we'll see here that the bounce goes down and makes a save and very soon we'll see a, a hit by Stevie Lee. But Matthew, I was going to say about the face-offs. You won a lot of face-offs in, in this game yourself and the players. I remember seeing some stats that felt almost like two to one. At this level, how important are face-offs to, to win, do you think? Oh, at any level, they're hugely important. At this level, when you don't see much of the puck anyway, um, you want to start with it if you can. And, um, you know, I wasn't great on draws through this tournament. I mean, the centres were so good. Um, Do you win this centers, one? Do you remember? I, foul. I, a, I don't know, but I just got a foul there. Um, no, I did win it, but my Stevie Lee didn't get it for me. <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah, no winning, winning draws. There you go. Like I lost that draw, it ends up a shot on net. That could be the difference at the end of the day um, between us staying up and going and going down. So um, they're massively important. These on draws, um, you know. Um, but uh, you know, we'll see see how I do on this one here. But um, well, I'm going for yes. Gotta, gotta I'm, I'm going yes. Can. Yes, you do. Yeah, okay, yeah, we'll take that. That's. I mean, that's good as, isn't it? Get the puck out, and, and that's fine, isn't it? Yeah. That's a great so jump by here. Jonah there, and Lacko's just uh, doing some good forechecking. Yeah. So we'll, we'll pause now to hear the commentary from this big hit for, for Stevie Lee. Team France doesn't have a final 4A forward. Here's Texier. Texier. It's out of the way of Myers. Excellent forecheck. Excellent pressure here in the offensive zone from Great Britain, not allowing France to have one last breakout. Texier with just two seconds remaining will get down that right side. He gets hit by Lee. Ooh. And Lee steps up. <laughs> I mean, I wonder, Davy. I mean, what, do you think that sort of sent a message? Your hit and his hit. Do you think that sent a, you know, a message to France, which they may have, you know, been a bit worried about that you were going to match them all the way? Uh, yeah, I think teams know we're a physical um, team, the most skilled, but we like to play physical, work hard. Um, just watching that again. Yeah, I love that. Great. Hit. Yeah. I'm I mean, I don't know if you've seen hit. on the big screen. I don't know if you've seen on the big screen there, but when Steve made that hit, like you were saying, Chris, some some hits do get called as penalties, and you were saying, Dave, there's not many open ice hits. Because as soon as that contact was made, I checked my shoulder to see if the ref had made a put his hand up there to, to call the penalty. Mm, mm. It was great to see the refs to, to see you know to see it go, and they were two great hits and, and two fair hits. Guys, thanks very much for joining us. It's it's been great to talk through the, the second part of the first period. Thanks for bringing up some great memories of the trip at the World Championship. Well, so to the second period, and this was not the best of periods to start with for GB. And as you can see, I've been joined by three of the media team, Free Sports very own Aaron Murphy and Paul Lady, and from the BBC, Seth Bennett. I'll start with you, Murph. Um, can you remember what you thought of, of GB's first period? Nil-nil, pretty even, wasn't it? Well, I remember thinking that's probably what they would have wanted because France came out skating hard. And I think GB maybe thought, well, this is it's all come down to this. They probably had so much time to think about that it was all coming down to their game seven that 
they probably would have taken being uh, nil-nil after 20 minutes, shake off a little bit of the nerves and get into the game. Certainly, uh, they had a, a chance on the power play, if I remember correctly. I mean, they were in that first period, but I think they would have taken uh, the fact that it was still scoreless going into period two. Uh, poor lady, what, what about you? You 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 were sat next to Murph for the whole of the game. Can you remember your thoughts of how, how you felt GB went in it in what was obviously a must-win game? Yeah, I mean, uh, we've seen it before with GB, you know, getting down in the game and uh, finding a way back. And uh, it was, uh, you know, another just incredible performance, really. It, it's the kind of team that we've seen over the years that just never gives up, never quits, and no matter what the score is. And once they seem to get that one goal, then all of a sudden they come roaring back. And, um, you know, at this point in the game where, you know, things are still very, very close, I and mean, we obviously uh, don't see what's going to happen next. But, uh, you can just see as soon as GB got that one goal to get back in the game that things were going to turn, and they did. As Seth, you commentated, as we mentioned, for the BBC. I, I wonder what your thoughts were about how the game progressed. At 3-0 down, did you think they were done? At that point, you're starting to try and contextualise what this has meant for British hockey. And whilst it's a disappointment, it's not unexpected that they, they got to this stage. I think for me, though, at this point in the game, I was just wondering about those great chances GB had had in the first period, whether they were going to come back to haunt them. Because you know that France had enough. They had enough up front to cause problems for Great Britain. And whether or not, you know, if GB don't take their one, two, three good chances in that first period, do they then start to wonder whether this is just one step too far? And I, I think that was always my big concern. You know, they're going to have to rely on Ben Bounds, who made a, a string of really, really good saves throughout the whole of this game. A good one and there, wasn't there? Yeah, I mean, he, he, was, he was really good the whole tournament. But again, they, they just needed something for me because they'd had all that jump in the first period and it just felt like the air was slowly seeping out of the performance a little bit for me once we were into the second period and, and what was to come just exacerbated that. So GB will we'll soon see that they get some chances uh, and we'll talk about them in a moment. But Murph, I wonder for you, can you describe what the experience of, I mean, you've been to top flight tournaments, you've been to Olympics, but what was it like to commentate on what I guess now is your adopted nation? Yeah, I think it's a, it's a great point because I think it, we all had that moment at some point in Steel Arena or outside Steel Arena in Old Town of Kosice, some sort of moment where you went, my goodness, they're going to play Canada today or they're going to play Patrick Kane and the Americans today. I think for me, in I like to be in the commentary position two hours before, probably too early, but I like to soak it all in especially at a tournament of that magnitude. So I think for me, the, the moment where I pinched myself was they had that lovely scoreboard at uh, Steel Arena and they had the graphics and it was the Canada flag and the GB flag and some cool things going on on the scoreboard. And they were testing what was going to happen during the game. They were doing their, their rehearsal in-house. And for me, looking up and seeing Canada, the flag and the GB flag and thinking, well, some of the guys that we've watched for years in the EIHL and some of the guys that have certainly like Kirk coming down the wing here, guys that have grown up in front of our eyes are going to go out and play against some of the best players in the National Hockey League uh, at the Steel Arena against Canada in a few hours. So that was the, the pinch me moment for me. And at times watching Kirk, he didn't, he didn't look like a, a young fella from the Ontario Hockey League. Another he looked like here. he was ready. And there's a big chance there. He probably should have buried that one. Seth talked about the chances in the first period. But I think they were probably nervous in the first period, especially on the power play. But you can see right now they're growing into the game a little bit. And Kirk, for me, his time with the Peterborough Peets, he's starting to play against some of the best guys, guys that played for T Team Canada at the World Junior. So he looked so good, especially on that shift there. Looked so confident on the puck. And you can see why the Arizona Coyotes, you know, why they took him in the draft. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, we'll just pause for a moment because this is the sequence of play that, that leads to the, to the opening goal. It'll be picked up by Clairo to Bozon. Bozon to Manavion. Miavion will just throw it out front, and that's going to be a clear shot up under the bar by Reck. It's one not in France as Anthony Reck has his fourth goal of the competition. Paul, Paul, Paul I'll come to you. I, I mean, as a, as a coach, if that of you, the GB coach, is there much you can do about a goal like that? To me, it looked pretty, pretty well worked. Yeah, it was well worked, but I think, you know, there's a little bit of a miss on the back check there. You can see players were back for GB, but uh, 
and there was still a man open so a little bit of a defensive error coming back you can see you know there's there's a player standing still in the middle of the ice and the pass comes across maybe that last player there two players you can see maybe should have looked to see who was to the left and they didn't i think that's why the man was open but uh, it was a great play from france spotting that pass across that's not an easy play to make and that's a good shot to beat down so I mean, uh, it was a well-worked play, like you said, but also we have to say that defensively there was a, a missed uh, back check there. Uh, come to you, Seth, because we, we've seen those chances for Liam Kirk, and I remember in the commentary how much praise you gave Liam Kirk about how he deserved to be at this level, and, and he was showing that he deserved that extra ice time. What sort of tournament you know, do you think Liam Kirk had for, for GB? Because he may not have got a goal, but he, was, he had a lot of big moments for, it, for him. I think he did. I think the, the kind of issue for him, he missed the one game in the middle there. Um, and I, I think that it was trying to work out where you played him within the lineup. And I think that was something that people were sort of wrestling with throughout the course of the tournament. And I think that that's something that, as time went on, Liam Cook earned time off other players. Because every time he was on the ice there or thereabouts, he, he was using that speed and he's got that good release on the shot to, to give himself opportunities to play. And that was always going to be the challenge. You know, you've got this kid. Do you give him more ice than, than some of the more seasoned veteran players who've worked over, you know, 10 years to, to get themselves into this position? And I think that was the big challenge that they had with Liam Kirk. Um, his best days with Great Britain, we hope, are going to be to come in the future because he is he's undoubtedly going to be a massive talent when this generation of players move on. He's going to be able to take it on the shoulder. But it really is a you know changing of the guards time for, for Great Britain. And, and should they have lost this game, it may well have happened this summer. Mm, yeah, I mean, I guess you, you know, we, we never can tell. And let's be thankful that that decision had to be made. I think if we, we stop now, we'll, we'll see Kirk again do some great work. On the assist, 3.36 into the period. Here's Phillips. Bertrand. Bertrand gives it away to Davy Phillips. Davy Phillips shot comes off of Bertrand into the corner. Here's O'Connor. O'Connor will flip it back in deep and Gallet. Gallet has Kirk right in his face. Good play by Kirk. Kirk comes off the wall with a puck. Swings out wide. He's looking for an outlet. It'll come back to O'Connor. O'Connor with a shot. It comes off Heck Foy. I mean, I mean, Paul, that's again, that's another side to his game. We, you know, he there just won the puck and created a chance out of nothing, didn't he? Yeah, he's a really good offensive player, really smart offensive player. And one of the few players you see in, in his age group that really uses the offensive zone, comes all the way out to the blue line to get away from players, drives through the middle and, and finds that space. And uh, I think we, we tend to forget how smart he is on the ice, how well he plays his position for, for a young player. And uh, he's just going to get better and better. And the uh, uh, first time I watched him, I thought, you know, uh, you know, give Coach Peter Russell credit. He put him out there when a lot of people didn't know if he was ready or not. And uh, Pete's not afraid to take some chances, and he did. And uh, Kirk hasn't let him down. He's played very, very well for uh, GB. Murph, I mean, before you guys go, we're only going to see one goal. There'll be a couple more soon that they came quick together. Do you feel that GB deserved to be three down? Because it, it didn't feel that way. Watching the game from the stands, it, you know, when it became 3-0, it didn't feel like a 3-0 game to me. No, and I, I remember saying to Paul in a commercial break uh, that, you know, they're going to come back. They're going to they're going to make a game of this because you look down and even the, the traveling support where party and like GB were winning. There were those chances. You just saw a couple of chances again uh, from the point there from O'Connor. The guys like uh, like we talked about coming off the wall was Kirk creating chances. And when you look back at it, they were probably unlucky to be down 3-0. There were, as I said, some nerves maybe in the first period because of the pressure that I think we all knew was going to come down to this France game. But as they were down 3-0, I don't think that anyone on the bench believed that they were, they were going to lose the game. They, there's that old saying, it's never the easy way, right? And I think there was that kind of permeating on the bench. And whether it was the young guy, Kirk, or some of the veteran guys like Jonathan Phillips, uh, I think everyone believed that they were going to get it done, even at 3 nothing down, Ellie. Like you were not in our commentary box. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was that, Seth? Well, that's right. I pushed them out to sea with the flames on the boat. <laughs> it just felt like they were on the way to Valhalla at that point. Um, you know, 3 nil. They, they, I felt at 3 nil that the air had just gone completely out of the team. And, and you know, how do you find offense when you're a team that just doesn't have three whole offense? I mean, this was another great opportunity that came um, for Great Britain. But just look at how long he has to wait. Uh, and in the end, 
you know, there, there was no that there wasn't that second wave of support. And, and to think how few goals that GB have scored at you know at this level in the World Championship previously, and also within this tournament, it was just hard for me to imagine. Get my head to score four goals. I mean, there's a power play here. I mean, we touched on it with the other boys earlier. They, they let a lot go, didn't they, Paul? That it was a game where there was few penalties, and that's what you wanted at this level. The, the refs seemed to let a lot of things go. There was those big hits earlier in the game from Stevie Lee and, and Davy Phillips. It was probably great refereeing in a, in a big game like that to let a few things more than they'd normally let go. Do you think? Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. They did uh, let the game, let the players play, and. Uh made for a really good entertaining game and uh, the, you know the refs uh, at this level understand uh, the enormity of, of a game like this you know either uh, going back down or staying up so uh, of course they're going to they're not going to want to decide the game they're going to want to let the players decide it and uh, like i said we we've covered this gb team now for quite a few years and and it's a team that they're never out of the game you know they're 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 always a goal away of getting back into it and they i mean Okay, I, I, at that level, they're not blessed with a lot of scoring power. That's a good point from Seth, but I still think they have enough scoring power to to beat a team like France or to beat some of the lower teams, you know, at that level. Um, and I think uh, we saw that in that game. Uh, they got that one goal, and then, you know, it looked, you know, things turned pretty quick. They they started to get their confidence. We've seen that before with with uh, with the with the GB team when they, all of a sudden they. Um, they get a goal and uh, they just seem to roll with it. And uh, I guess, you know, obviously if they take a fourth one, then yeah, the, there's chances were pretty, you know, pretty dire. But once they got that one, I think everybody started to believe a little bit because we'd seen it before. For me, I think back to Seth's point, there was one thing that made me believe they could come back. I mean, look, at three nothing down, it was, it was pretty, you know, we were, we were also feeling a bit uh, like this could be it. But I also just had that sense there was, there was a shift from Farmer where for me, it was like Farmer was up three, nothing. He didn't even know the score. Like he didn't even know what period it was. He was just playing, <laughs> you know, what Farmer was like. He, he wasn't even aware of who was on his line. And I thought, well, he's going to get one. It was the body mm. language of Pete Russell on the bench as well. And the, the body language on the French bench, the coach Bozon was jovial and laughing with his players like they had done enough. And some of the French players, I think they just stopped playing and thought, well, there you go. The British, mm. we're, the GB are not going to come back. And because of that farmer shift and because of the, the body language on the two benches, I thought if they get one, they'll, they'll get it back into this. And as it went on, and once it got to overtime, I, I was sure that GB would win because the French, if you look down at their bench, it was a broken group. And Philippe Bozon, the coach, Coach Bozon, looked like a broken man, like something had slipped through his fingers. So it was the farmer shift of just the total unawareness for him <laughs> of what the score was or caring what the score was or caring who because he would have played like that whether it was canada leading three nothing i think because that's just farmer right and farms has had some big moments and he had another big moment um but certainly for me yeah i, I agree with you Seth. that three nothing i thought boy if they if they may have another bad shift here it's over but it was just that sort of laissez-faire from farmer that he didn't care what the score was that i thought they could get back into it and maybe a little bit of cockiness from france that they had done enough chris can i just jump in, in? That picture of Ben O'Connor sitting in the penalty box just summed up the tournament he'd had to that point. He couldn't have been lower if he was in a snake's belly at that point. He really was struggling. Things just hadn't gone right for him on the ice. His mental fortitude as this game went on just speaks about how wonderful a player he is and the fact that he still was able to contribute offensively when you know, you could see his confidence was ebbing away as the tournament had gone on. And what he did later in this game was absolutely remarkable and why he is the greatest British defenceman we've ever produced. Wonderful. Well, listen, guys, thanks very much. These 14, 15 minutes have, have absolutely flown by. Great to get a media view and, and to chat to you guys. Hopefully we'll be in a, a press box, a media box somewhere next year because I don't know about you, I'm missing it like crazy. But guys, Murph, Paul and Seth, thanks a lot. Well, now to probably one of the more dramatic parts of the game until that overtime period. I'm joined by Robert Dowd, Ben O'Connor and Mike Hammond, our first guest of, as well uh, from Canada in Mike Hammond. Uh, Benny, well, all of you, you've timed it wrong to tune in. Uh, Benny, I'll come to you first. You're in the box. I'm just wondering, what are you thinking? 
please don't school. <laughs> um, <laughs> feeling shame. Not again. Um, <laughs> shame. Not again. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Obviously, anytime you're in the box, you, you don't want a goal being scored, and especially on this type of stage, it's not the best of feeling. Um, but on a positive, you do get juice. <laughs> And sweets in some boxes across the country, but uh, maybe not in Slovakia. Yeah, <laughs> yeah uh, not. Dowdy, I wonder whether. Uh, sorry, Ben, for interrupting. We'll come back to you in a minute. Dowdy, I wonder whether what happens now with these two goals in, in, in quick succession, did you see it coming as a, as a team? No, absolutely not at all. We, we, we were feeling pretty good after that first period. They had some good spells, but. It was a good tight game, so for these two to go in in quick succession was a, a bit of a shock. And panic stations weren't hit yet, but it was a, a quick reminder to wake up. Yeah, we're just about to, to watch the goal here. Here's Flurry to Trey, 125 remaining in O'Connor's minor. Here's Texier, Chakyakvili again waits for the coverage to implode, and he puts it through. Power play goal, France. He waited for him. Oh, there we go. go. There's, the, there's the second goal uh, going in. Uh, Mike, I wonder what the feeling is. You know, this team never seems to panic. <laughs> What's the feeling like on, on the bench? Is, is there no panic at this stage? Um, that's just a two goal, so I, I don't think it was too bad at that stage. They're still lucky to play. Um, I believe after this shift, I think they came back <laughs> down and, yeah, I won't give it away. I'm sure everyone knows, but I think after that one, it was a lot of panic. I think that was a big timeout we ended up taking, though. So, yeah, there's there's a lot of questions there, and yeah, I mean, Ben, it's very on GB like, isn't it, to let in two goals in seven seconds? It's over the last three or four years, and we'll just I'll come to that in a minute. We'll just watch this this goal because it comes straight from the play. First of the competition for Shaq Yakvili. Here's Rick. Rick back in. Rick scores. Well, Great Britain not ready for So, the so there you go. But my point was, Ben, you, you've you've had such a big spell recently where you've won massive games. It was very on GB like that that period of play, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Um, and I think, like just like you said, recent years that doesn't happen. And uh, like Hammy said, when that went in, it was like an eye-opening moment. And do you know what? It just shows the character of the boys because there's a lot of teams out there would have just folded and that game would have been seven, eight, nothing. But that timeout was, you know, was so key. And uh, we all, you know, just came together and Pete just said, calm down, just relax, play our game. Because we actually had a lot of possession. We had a lot of chances. It just wasn't going in. Um, we knew it was going to come. Um, so, yeah, it was... When that third one went in, it was like, right, come on, back to basics, back to back to our game. Is is that kind of the thing Pete's saying now, Dowdy? Is that is that, that, that sort of message that he's telling you? Yeah, pretty much. We just need to calm down and keep playing. We, we knew they were going to tire. That game was so fast and so high intensity, and they played the late game the night before. So we knew if we kept skating at them, that they were going to start to run out of juice. So that was a message of just relax, just play. It'll happen. I mean, Mike, how important is a timeout in a game like this when it's all going against you? How important is it a timeout just for people just to refocus? Yeah, it's crucial. I mean, uh, <clears throat> you don't really expect to get back-to-back -back goals like that. To, so kind of slow the momentum down and uh, just settle the boys down. And like Benny was saying, we were getting a lot of chances and stuff, and we were skating with them. So... I think it was just a matter of getting that first one and then just working away. And then uh, I think that timeout just made us stay focused and not uh, not stray away from what uh, we were there to do. No, the, the goals come a bit later, but I wonder, Ben, after that timeout, do you feel kind of settled? Do you feel a bit more in control? Yeah, I mean, you know, the timeout, it, like we said, it was so important. And, um, you know, you, you see the following shift here, we, we are buzzing. Um, we're, you know, we're flying and it, it didn't really knock our confidence, so to speak. Um, yes, it's not the ideal position you want to be in, 3-0 down, but, um, you know, as you see, we're still, we're still chasing, uh, we're still hard on pucks, we're still playing uh, good hockey. So, and, and like Hammy said, there's still half the game to go, pretty much, so plenty of time. Mm. Mm. You had a lot of possession in this game, Dowdy. Um, 
very different to a lot of the other games. Was that suddenly hard? Because some games, you know, Canada, you, you barely were able to touch the puck. Denmark, perhaps. Was it was it hard, you know, to suddenly see a different style of game? How how was that to adapt? It was nice. It was nice to see the puck yeah. come on uh, twenty seconds of periods. But yeah, no, it was uh, it was good. But the the pace of the game was was so quick and so intense. It was it was an adjustment because the, the against the other teams they controlled the game so much. All you had to do was kind of hold the middle, where this was a lot of back and forth. So it, it was a, a completely different game to what we played all that week. Yeah, I, I wonder, Ben. Do you, do you think? I mean, it's hard to speak for France, but do you think they thought they had they had you beat at this stage? Yeah, I mean, we've spoken about it before, Elliot. You know, three 0 up in a hockey game. Um, you know, with with thirty minutes to go, um, you know, you, you're cruising. Um, you know, you, you're pretty you're sure, pretty confident. Especially, um, you know, they're thinking against GB. They haven't won a game in the tournament. Um, you know, they're being a bit cocky and arrogant up three, three nothing. Um, but uh, like we said, we never give up, and that's how we got to this stage by um, never giving up and never, never, never say die attitude. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mike, just in general, you, you scored four goals at the tournament. GB's leading goal scorer. What was the experience like playing against these best players in the world? Um, it's obviously an experience of a lifetime. Uh, it's nice we get to go back and do it again. But yeah, it was crazy, really. I mean, I was just so proud of the group and how, how well we skated and how well we played. And just kind of showed everybody that we're, uh, we belong there. And uh, I think we could have even had a couple of other better results, you know. I mean, that first game against Germany, I think we could have... Uh, Kept it closer, leaving a little bit longer, but uh, to get some goals at a stage like that, it was it was special. Yeah, same to you, Ben. Really, what what was that? You know, can you put that experience into words? The whole thing. Again, you know, when you're playing, you know, watching these stars on TV, and you know, you're watching NHL highlights every day, and to be on the same ice as them, and you know, it is special. Um, it is fun. Uh, you know, it's something that at the time when we were playing Canada, we didn't know if we were going to be up or down. And, um, you know, we might never get that chance ever again. Um, so we had to embrace it. And um, there's a lot of learning curves and ups and downs. And I think uh, for the next World Championships, we'll be more prepared and, you know, expectation and um, what to what to come. Um, but no, I think it was great. Um, I loved every second of it. and It was good fun to be on the world stage like that, playing against the best. Mm. Dowdy, the power break here that in the World Championship there was three a period, if I remember correctly. Uh, correctly, how, how were they beneficial to to you as a team having three extra breaks? Uh, I'm not keen on them to be honest. I think if you have a bit of momentum and uh, you got the team on the back foot, it kind of takes the wind out your sails and gives the other team uh, a second to breathe. But mm. it kind of helped in a positive way for us because we were on the back foot a lot of the time in this tournament. <laughs> what about your experience? Like I've asked the other two, what, what was that feeling like just to be there? It, it was awesome. It was. It really was very cool playing against some of the best players in the world and uh, comparing yourself to them. It, it, it was good. It was uh, a bit frustrating, like Hammy said, because I think against some of the other teams, I thought we could have done better. I thought we were in games and then we made a couple of daft little mistakes which put us in a hole where I feel as a team we could have performed better. We, we've got the, the potential in us to, to put some really good results together in this tournament, I think. Just while we've got you on, how, how's the injury? Because obviously you were set to miss out on the World Championship. It, it never happened. How, how, how are you yeah. feeling? How are things? I'm um, good. Good. Uh, a little bored of being in the house and lifting weights by myself now. It'd be nice to go to the gym and see the boys. And uh, But yeah, the injury is really good. Back to pretty much normal now. So it, it's uh, it now I'd just be happy to get out and see the boys and work out. Mm. Uh, uh, Benny, power breaks, yes or no? Um, well, in this tournament, they were fantastic for myself personally because we were chasing around the, the D zone for the majority of the time. Um, I know Dowdy's and Hammy saying they, they don't like them because they're forward, they don't do much work, you see. 
Um, but when you're playing <laughs> against these guys, and you're chasing them around the D zone. Uh, yeah, it's tough. <laughs> but no, it's, I mean, I mean, I don't mind. Yeah. It is what it is. I mean, did you fail against maybe Canada, USA? You just spent the game chasing. Is that how you actually felt? Yeah, and the rest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Really? Maybe not. Yeah, it's, it, no, I mean, no, but I mean, you know, when you're playing against these teams, they're just so, so fast and so skilled. You know, I mean, they shield the puck so well. It's just, it's another level. Um, you know, the, the world class, that's why they're playing the NHL. That's why. You know, a lot of them playing the best leagues in the world. Uh, so yeah, it is it is uh, it is a lot different to what we're used to. That's for sure. We're about to see a chance from from Ollie Betteridge. This is where I feel momentum, and I'm going to ask you, Mike, was changing. Leading up to the goals, you had a lot of possession. France started to to make a few mistakes. We're going to see a period of play where that's evident. This is about the mark where it changed. Did you feel that on the ice? Um, I'm sure I can't quite remember the chance. It's just that you'll see it very shortly indeed. <laughs> but yeah, my, my question was... I don't think we did. I thought we skated with them the whole time. But uh, you said Ollie got a chance here? Yeah, it, was, it's, it will be with you any second now. I'm just preempting it. But I, I just feel that, you know, the, the momentum before oh, the goal had already started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah and, you and you guys... Are, kind of slip after, after that timeout to be fair with you but uh yeah this line was great just moving their feet all night oh yeah right here yeah we had a lot of chances though i remember in that first period and we came out pretty flat and then after that i think uh we just kind of took over same question to you really to really ben you know the the cup there comes a point in the game where france just 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 look a little bit more wary of you than they were. Yeah, I think like Dowdy said, they played the, the night game um, the day previous. You know, up three nothing, they maybe think they can sit back a little bit. And you know, as we see, like we get one goal, we get two goals. It, we just we're back in it and we're flying. Um, you know, and then it's a little bit too late for them. They're thinking, uh oh, they're on the back foot. Where like Hammy said, we had good chances, we just couldn't score. Um, um, early on in the game, so it wasn't like we were playing bad. Um, you know, mm. they scored a power play goal. They scored a goal of a nice shot straight after that. So I mean, it's it wasn't like we were playing bad hockey. No, we're about to see the goal, so we'll, we'll pause in a minute, Dowdy. But you know, we're going to have a power break first, actually. So we do have a, a bit of time. Uh, so there you go, Ben. You're happy, Dowdy. You're not so happy. Uh, Hammy, power breaks, yes or no? It depends where you are in the game. Like they said, if you're pushing forward, you kind of want to keep it going. But if you're chasing, I mean, sometimes it's nice to slow it down, kind of, kind of take the momentum out of their sails a little bit. But it's it depends where you are in the game, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Well, the goal's coming here, so we'll just pause for a minute. Richardson, the farmer, gives it away to Manavion, who will dump it right back in. And again, we see. When you're up by three goals like that, you can just dump it in and wait for mistakes. You don't even have to exert yourself if you're France right now, and that makes it difficult for GB. Here's Farmer to Hammond. Farmer trying to find the lane down the left side, and he's bumped off the puck by Manavia. That allows Janil to move it up the right side, looking for Rec. Good play by O'Connor to dump it right back into Farmer. Farmer puts a shoulder into Manavion, but he A-frames and got it along to Clairo. Good play by Dowd, though. Kicks it along. Dowd, Go on, Dowd. The stick behind his back, use his feet. Come on, and now that's... Farmer, Oof. Farmer hit by Janil. Giveaway. Here's O'Connor. O'Connor to Dowd. Dowd and all alone. He scores. Yeah. Robert Dowd, <laughs> puck to twine. There we go. Fine. Um, right. To you first, Benny. You, you read that play so well. What do you remember of it? Um, I remember if it went past me, then I don't think I would have gotten the shift and probably would have lost the game. I think four goals was a bit too steep. But <laughs> when you're down, when you're down three nothing like that, you've got to take chances. And I knew he was past him before he got to the puck. He had a look over his shoulder, and I was backing off. And then I stopped, so he was trying to fire it and cross ice. Um, like I said, luckily it paid off, and you know Dowdy did the hard work. Yeah, fantastic finish, Dowdy. What, what's going through your mind as, as Benny gives you that puck? 
well, before Benny gives me a puck, I'm saying, please give me the puck. I, I, I know he's done it so many times. He sees me, and I know he sees me, but I'm just thinking, please, please hit me. Because because as he winds up, I'm thinking, is he, is he going to shoot this? No, please, I'm open. But then when he gives me it, after I make the first fake, the goalie bites pretty hard. The goalie bites real hard on the first fake, so it's just about moving it to the side and lifting it then. Here's more chances. Fellini gets yeah. a dig no, there, and I think he gets a second now, one again in a moment. Once that one goes in, the whole it everything shifts. They start to panic and they've run out of gas. Yeah. Yeah, you agree with that, Hammy? For sure. Yeah. I think the, they could feel it. It was just a matter of going in, and then after that. Oh yeah. I mean, especially after that second goal. I remember. I think Benny, you threw one from center on. On the goal towards the end of the period, the goalie would kind of looked shaky, yeah. and I think we went into the dressing room thinking, "All right, boys, like they're kind of on their heels." Yeah, yeah. yeah this is this is a, a great period of play. How, how much, Robert, does the the bench lift just with that one goal? Oh, massive! You you could feel it. You could feel it in in the arena. Never mind the bench. It the the whole mood changed. You could see they they were on the back foot there, and everyone on the bench was ready to go. Now. Now the belief starts to set in. When you're three nothing, you're thinking like, "We need one. We need one." Almost desperate. But then once one goes in, you start thinking, "Okay, and like now we're coming. Now we got it." Mm. I think mm. big time our, uh, our experience, our experience from the year before, definitely helped out too. Right, being in this position, knowing it can be done. So massively, yeah, massively. We, the we've come from behind so many times with this team. And the pictures, I was just going to say, and Ben, I think we touched on, on it a few days ago. You see in these pictures, everyone in the crowd is supporting GB, aren't they, bar the French fans? Yeah. Yeah, and that's that was the nice thing. We were like the underdog story, right? So, I mean, for us, it was like a home game. It was fantastic, you know. Um, you know, every other fan in the in the rink, bar the French fans, were cheering for us. Um, so, it was it was cool. It was special. And, I mean, you see since, that, since Dowdy scored that goal, it's just... We're all over them. They're collapsed, small box, um, you know, in their zone, and they're making mistakes. Um, and, you know, we're, we're buzzing. And, uh, you know, it's, like you said, one goal can really lift your, uh, your mood and uh, can really make the other team uh, sit back and, and sit back on the heels. Yeah, a great period of possession. It's just real constant GB possession. We'll pause because I get a feeling there's another goal coming here. Pexie being chased by Lakovic, goes around the net. Quick hands, you can see why he did spend some time with the Columbus Blue Jackets. Here's Heck Foy, Heck Foy into the corner. Fleury left it behind and Lee pushed it along, but here's the aforementioned Texier. All the way back, tries to find the trailer, Heck Foy. Heck Foy thought about cutting to the net, goes all the way around the GB goal. Texier away from Richardson. GB have to get this puck, they have to get it out. And Right on cue, Matthew Myers to Jonathan Phillips. Phillips, Lakovic just held the this line. This is a big mistake here Fresh by them. Come over the boards for Great Britain. Here's Hammond on a fan play by Heckfoy out in front for Farmer. Here's Davy Phillips. Phillips back to O'Connor. O'Connor fakes the shot. O'Connor finds a lane. It's deflected in front of Hammond. Hammond scores. His fourth goal of the world. I mean, you you weren't gonna team. you weren't gonna miss that, were you? That was your area you, you got your goals so many yeah, of them exactly. from around that that area wasn't it yeah i mean uh there's a turnover so i mean nobody had man coverage and I, as soon as i saw benny get it and start shimmy shaking i kind of knew to get to my spot i mean it's something we worked on on the power play kind of just get lost and it kind of bounces out um he's a smart enough player where he's not going to go try to go bar down throws a smart shot on that and uh it's hard to make a mistake on that one no, you, I was you, trying you to go ball down, Hammy. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe that guy tips it. Look, yeah, at that, yeah. look at that reaction. Who's that? Ben Davis getting very excited. W what was it like on the bench then, Dowdy? I mean, 3 1 to 3 2, it must have just been unreal. Yeah. Yeah, it was uh, the bench that lifted, but we, we were gone then. Like, th this is when you start to think, like, it's ours. It's uh, you won. You, you've got that momentum. Now you've got two. 
you believe now like it, it, it's our game to lose almost I know it sounds silly when you're a goal down but we're flying and they, they've got nothing they've got no answer they're chipping it out and then we're just coming back at them every time they've got no sustained pressure it's, you mentioned it, Mike, in a previous answer about the experiences of the year before. I mean, how crucial was that being 2-0 down with nine minutes to go and then finding yourself in, in the situation you were in against France? How how crucial do you think the experience was from a year before? Oh, for sure. I mean, same same thing too. Last, last day of the tournament, um, the year before is even maybe crazier being in Hungary and having literally mm. every fan against you. This one, at least when... Uh, the momentum sort of swing it was in our favor and you can tell the fans were really behind us but uh yeah i mean that experience was massive for us and that we really we really built off that i mean after that first goal we knew i mean it was time to come back and and that's what we did yeah look at you there getting the crowd going again as we mentioned that the crowd were just uh, fantastic one of you touched on it earlier about this shot from from ben which we're about to see so let's just Pause for a minute and watch it, in, you know, as it happened. Sometimes that is an indication yeah, of fatigue. This. And with still plenty of hockey to go here, it's a one-goal game. 35 seconds like remaining. O'Connor, why not? Just That's what I was going to say. Hardy made hard work of that. Florian yeah. Hardy had that come up. That would have been another greasy goal. Like I say, like the Italy game, there was it was pretty similar in many ways. Well, it didn't go in, but you see what I mean. Yeah, yeah again, just totally sort of still left last minute of the period just trying to get it in and get a face off in their zone and I'll tell you what that would have been nice though eh? <laughs> yeah i mean maybe you wouldn't have won it in overtime the way you did but um what robert what was the atmosphere like do you remember in, in the second break in, in the dressing room uh, it, was a, it was a lot more upbeat like the boy, boys were fired up and ready there was no one kind of sat you could the, no one looked tired at all Everyone was full of juice. Everyone just wanted the, ne the next period to get going. Mm, I, I can imagine. And Ben, what was it like to play seven games in, in a little under two weeks? You've been used to playing five uh, at World Championships. You know, how, how was that physically and mentally? Yeah, again, very difficult because it's not, it's not like you have any easy games. I mean, <laughs> every game was an absolute battle and you know, you just fatigued every game trying to keep up with these guys that are just flying. Um, so again, and mentally, you know, you know, getting you know hammered every game and not getting as much possession as you'd normally have and not touch, touching the puck. You know, the guys like Dowdy, Hammy, and myself, you know, we, we touch the puck a lot normally. So that's frustrating. Um, to lose the way we were was frustrating. Um, yeah, it was. It was mentally tough, but. We all we, we had meetings and before that France game, and we knew that was the one that we uh, were both winning. And we're all in a good headspace, and we're all confident before going into that game. Yeah. Listen, guys, come to the end of your stint. It's been great fun, real dramatic stint in the game. There's lots more to come, but listen, thanks a lot for taking the time to join us. Cheers, Hi, boys. boys. Cheers, yeah, guys. Hammy. See you later, Hammy. Thank you, Hammy. Yeah, shave. Thank you. Thank you, Benny. <laughs> Thanks, Chad. She's gone. So to the third period in this most dramatic of nights. As you know, there's more drama to come. To talk us through the next few minutes, Mark Richardson, Robert Farmer, and the leaders, the bosses of the GB Supporters Club, Annette and Alan Petri. Great to have both of you. We'll come to you shortly. Uh, Richie, I wonder how you're feeling. One goal game. What, what's the the mood and the energy like in the team at this stage? Well, I think um, going into that that third period, I think everyone was just feeling so good, so positive. Uh, that second period was possibly you know the best hockey we we played all tournaments. So uh, you know we'd, we'd been in that position before, so everyone was was ready to go. Well, we're just going to watch. I mean, Farms, you, you come here later. We'll have to, you'll have to take the the slack bit to start off with. Just let's let's watch this because you some close. You come close to getting the goal even this early. Let's watch this now. Very good. Gets it to Davis. Pinpoint pass off the skate of Davis. Here's Lake. Lake has had a couple of good looks around the Hardy net as well. Still looking for his first GB Senior International goal. Here's Rec pushed off the puck by Davis. 
Breck does enough to dump it in. Bounds, Bounds has to be careful. Bozon was coming, and we've got an offside call in behind the play. Yeah. Well, we've got a bit of a break in play before we, we get to it. So, uh, but, but Farms, I'll come to you first of all, because we can talk about it before we see it. Did, did you think it was in, this, this chance that we're about to see? Your, your arms go up in the air. Yeah, it's, it's a shocker, this one. I uh, <laughs> should have scored. It was a great chance, and especially a tournament where you, well, I didn't get too many chances. It was... Uh, at the time, I wasn't particularly pleased that I did that with this one because uh, should have scored. Obviously, important to the game. I was, uh, yeah, not happy with it. Okay, we'll pause again because it, it is coming up right now. Benaviant has to get his head up because here comes Hammond. Through and into space. Down out front for Farmer and Farmer on the backhand. Farmer, he almost <laughs> put his hands up to his head as if to say, I can't believe yeah, so, I don't hit the net. So well, close, gets... Farms. I guess at, at this level of hockey, it's, it's massive, isn't it? Yeah, well, obviously the the whole week we we hadn't had too many chances, so to to score three or four goals, we were going to have to take some of them. So at the time, um, yeah, I was pretty upset. It was a great pass by Dowdy, and yeah, I, at the time I was uh, yeah pretty upset. I didn't score that. I should have should have put that one away. Hey, but you scored an even better one a bit later. I just wondered, does it weigh on your mind? And I think it was the next shift where you get the goal, which we'll see. Does, does it weigh on your mind when you're sitting on the bench? Straight afterwards, yeah. I was, well, I'm sure you'll see. I think there's a good clip in a sec. But, um, yeah, straight afterwards, I was uh, frustrated, but then didn't really have chance because uh, we were concentrating on trying to get back in the game. So, yeah, didn't not for too long, no. Yeah, this clip I think you mentioned is coming up. I'm sure Smallsy uh, on the bench here. I'm sure he appreciates you wetting him. <laughs> oh dear, great stuff. Uh, Annette and Alan, I'd like to bring you in at this stage. What was it like to, to watch the team that you followed all around the world? What was it like to watch them playing against Canada, America and, and all these teams? Oh. Unbelievable. I mean, tonight we've actually had a sports club virtual. Uh, we've had a virtual world championship. Tonight we had the USA games. We've actually just finished watching that. Uh, and it's just unbelievable. It, it just puts shivers down your spine. Watching it again, yeah, and to know we came that close to the USA. I mean, the atmosphere in that last period was absolutely unbelievable. I think the whole rink was full and great friends. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Annette, what, what about your thoughts? How was it for you, Annette? It was just, it was such a surreal experience. I mean, you know, I was lucky to see it 25 years ago. But it just wasn't the same. The team um, last year have had that grit, that determination, you know, the dare to dream, the never to say die attitude. It was just so, so surreal. I couldn't believe that, you know, our guys were up against these guys. And watching the vi a video clip earlier of when Olga was on the coach and like Matt Myers said, oh, I'm the only builder in the whole of the World Championships. <laughs> That, that really comes <laughs> home, but you know, our guys, you know, they're not just hockey players, they, you know, they have full-time jobs as well, and it just made it that mm. bit more surreal. Yeah, I mean, Richie, I wonder, it, it, that's an interesting point, Is it was it as surreal for you as guys as, as it was for the fans? Oh, definitely. Um, you know, I don't think you can really explain the kind of, the experience, uh, I think the first day when we, we walked into our, you know, through the hallway to our dressing room and walked right past Canada's uh, dressing room and, you know, it kind of started to become a little bit real. But you, the whole time you're there, you never really get used to the fact that, you know, you're walking down the corridors past these guys every day and uh, it's something that we'll all remember for the rest of our lives. I guess, Robert, you know, it... You, you, as a hockey player, I'm sure you were in awe of these players because the, these these superstars. But once the puck was dropped, I guess you had to kind of cancel that out because there was a game to play. Yeah, well, we didn't have really have much chance to be in awe of them because if you uh, if you weren't fully concentrated, they were probably going to score. So it was, um, yeah, it was some experience playing against the quality of players we were playing against, and especially. Obviously, some of them you've watched on uh, TV at the highest level, and to to play against them and to earn the right and deserve to play against them, it was uh, yeah, it was definitely a surreal experience. 
I wonder how, in terms of like, the, the, go back, Richie, I'll say this to you, the first game, you may have lost to Germany, but you could have won and, and you came off the ice and did interviews after the games and guys were disappointed you'd lost. That just shows how far this, this team had come, that you were disappointed that you lost to a, a top tier nation. Yeah, I mean, I don't think a few years ago we thought we'd be uh, in that position coming off the ice, being disappointed from a 3-1 loss to, to Germany. But um, as you say, that's about how far this this team's come. And, um, you know, just I think it set us up quite well for the tournament. Although we knew there was going to be, you know, harder games, we just, it just gave us a bit of belief that, you know, once we got through all those tough games into this game against France, we could, uh, we could have a chance. You as a team, you created a lot of chances in this game, and, and, and shortly we're going to see a few more of them. Farms, did, did you feel? Oh, is Matthew getting a, a bit involved? Uh, a bit of bit of push and shove. And, and I'll come to another question actually, because there was a big hit from Stevie, there was a big hit from Davy. Farms getting in their faces. Do you think as the game went on, Robert, that you kind of ruffled, you know, France's feathers a bit? Well, I, th I think that's the way we we play and. If I remember the tournament, then it was it was almost different rules to the tournaments we played in the years before. We were able mm. to play a little bit more of our style of hockey, and against France, who we were matched up better with, it obviously played into our favour. And yeah, the Stevie and Davies hits in the first period were obviously big big hits, and then yeah, I felt we were able to play play more physical than we would have been in other years, which helped us, I think. Yeah, well, just just pause a sec because the the, the screw was turning for the, for the third goal, but there was a chance here coming up which we can just watch. Out wide to Shields. Shields will roll it in to the corner. Perlini calls off Kirk. Kirk goes beyond the the goal line, but Gudig is there. France will survive that dash forward from GB. Here's Texier. Counter attack. Texier inside out. Texier with a shot. He goes wide. He had a nice move around Billingsley, but couldn't finish it off. He threw it high and wide. Here comes Perlini. Perlini in. Perlini with the net drive shot. Stopped by Hardy. Great net drive. I wonder, Richie, Perlini. could could you feel that goal coming? Yeah, I think, um, you know, even in the second period, I think we could have maybe had a few more. It was just, we were starting to put that kind of pressure on them that maybe we'd been used to being on the other end of for most of the tournament. You know, we were getting good chances and, you know, seeing a lot more of the puck and and we all believed that we'd get another one. Well, I'm going to come to you, Annette and Alan, in a minute. These supporters are just, have got me a perfect question, but I think we should pause because this is a, another special Robert Farmer moment coming very, uh, very shortly indeed. So let's just watch a bit of the play and how things develop over the course of the next few minutes. Hoping that'll kick out front to Farmer. Great play by O'Connor. He's really found his game here against France. O'Connor again, quick shot. Looking for the redirect by Hammond. It'll come all the way back to Phillips. Phillips for Farmer. Farmer trying to walk out front. Farmer, oh, he scores! Farmer! It's 3-3! Farmer with a flair for the dramatic. It's game on at Steel Arena. That's the head of a goal, Farms. But what do you remember the way you came out the corner? Took us through it. The replay will come. Up any minute now. I, I I remember the guy was was coming to hit me, so I tried to spin off, and then in my head I was going to pass to uh, to Dowdy because I'm obviously Dowdy's a great player, he's got a great shot, so I was going to pass, and the guy just uh, cut that out and let me go straight to the net. So and then I've obviously just tried to shoot over the goalie. I think it came off his shoulder, um, but yeah, I think. Yeah, originally I, I wanted to give it to Dowds, but the defender slid in the way of that, so I went for the goal. Maybe put you on the spot here, but which goal was, I mean, which goal was bigger? The one in Hungary or the one there? If you could say which one was the biggest? I don't, that was definitely better than the Hungary <laughs> one. But, um, I don't know, pr probably Hungary because I think we would have scored another goal in this game. If, I, if that one didn't go in, I think Hungary, obviously, there was no time left. But, um, but yeah, they're both, obviously, uh, important goals. And, um, yeah, it was great experiences. Yeah, amazing. You're just getting a name for yourself for scoring clutch goals. Uh, Annette, to, to you and then to Alan. But, Annette, uh, we saw the pictures, and we've touched on this already in the broadcast. Everybody was supporting GB in this ring, weren't they? But, but the French 
Oh, it was absolutely unbelievable. I remember going into the rink, you know, just to the game started, and it was actually quite empty. But as the game went on, there was just more and more people. And actually, all I remember after the farmer scored that goal was um, there's quite a few Slovakians in the box behind us, and they just grabbed hold of us all and was just, just literally shaking us. They were just so wanted to be to win that game. Uh, what about Alan? That just the reception you got as a whole, that the media were intrigued by the GB supporters and the GB players. You know, have you ever known anything like it in the terms of the way the support and, and you know was received by everyone involved in the top level of the championship? Uh, I mean, we've obviously in the past we've had up the old articles, uh, interviews and stuff. But I mean, it was just like another level. It's just uh, it's like going into outer space. Uh, just incredible and some of the stuff that i mean I, I remember one of the commentators from tsn saying they wanted to ship all the fans from the great britain sports but they wanted to ship them into the nhl to make the atmosphere so much better and you know they'd love to have them there i mean that's just like uh, incredible incredible uh, credit to uh, credit to all the fans that were there not just from the sports club but there a lot of people that came off their own back as well and the atmosphere uh, in that last period and some of the other games, like especially the USA at the end. I mean, it was just electric. Uh, I, I remember just seeing fans from Finland, Slovakia, Germany, all around us, and everybody was up one to a man cheering GB across the line in those games. It was amazing. It absolutely was. Richie, can you feel that support from the, the GB fans when you're on the ice? Oh, definitely. Every every year we, we go away, the, the travelling support is just amazing you know we, we play in, in so many games where there's hardly anyone in the stands but our fans you know and uh they're always loud and uh like as players we we really appreciate it robert the gb going on the power play there i think it for the tournament it was, was zero from 11. um how different was it you know and, and the question there is not really a negative against great britain it's more about how good as we as we watch this goal again let's just watch it one more time what a finish farms um my, my question is is how good were the penalty kills were, were they another level of what you perhaps have experienced at international hockey before yeah i mean obviously 11 power plays in seven games i mean it's hard to really get any um momentum when you're not getting a chance to to go on the power play and yeah, yeah. of course the players that you on the ice against a top level player so it's going to be a lot more difficult and but yeah thankfully we we uh, managed to score when five on five and we didn't have to rely on it in this tournament i wonder what the feeling was richie in in this third period did you did you feel you had the legs france played the night before could, could you feel them tiring at the same time um yeah i think um you know, when you when you watch this game back, I think you can definitely see as the game goes on, I feel like we're actually skating a lot better than France. And that's, you know, saying something. They're a very good team and uh, there's a reason why they were up in that division for so long. But I just get the feeling watching it that, you know, that belief and that energy was on our side. Mm. Where does that, you know, the belief come from, Farms? You know, the... The, the attitude never say die and, and, and the, the holes you've got yourself out of, you know, how, how do you boys achieve it year after year, do you think? I don't know. I, I, I think we're, we're all so, um, so close uh, off the ice and then we just come and come and play. I don't think there's a, a lot of thinking behind it, but I think we all, you know, we believe that we're a good team and, you know, times like when you're three nothing down you have to come together and we we seem to be able to do it we, and yeah i don't think it's something you can explain or even try and replicate it's just a, a thing with this team where we can pull together and come back in games like we have them i mean you make a point about the belief because the belief inside the room and the bond inside the room is so strong and it doesn't matter if people write you off or you know I think there was some feeling that when you got here a few people at the top level perhaps didn't feel GB didn't deserve to be there which is really disrespectful if, if we're honest but my point is to you Richie is is that that inner belief is really what's important and and probably led from your head coach Pete Russell as well 
Yeah, obviously that comes from Pete. As uh, as Farm said, you know, we've all played together for so long and we all, you know, look forward to playing for GB that it's more like a, a club team, if you will. You know, it seems like you've been together for the whole season, you know, and, you know, you get there and you just pick up where you were the, the year before. Uh, just finally, before we finish, you know, Annette and Alan, how... How great has it been to see this this group of players? It's not changed dramatically, you know, to, to where they've come. And you know, some people might write them off, but I know the loyal GB supporters never have. Oh no, you, you can just see that team bond. Um, you know, from the minute they step on the ice, you know it's there. They believe in each other, and I, you know, I think like Richard said, you know, the camaraderie they've got between each other. It's like you know they were playing with each other last week. You know, they've just stepped on the ice for however long they've been apart. And it's like they've never been away from each other. And you can really, really notice that. Everything's so smooth. Everything's so slick. Yeah, yeah I think for wonderful. me, well, I, think, I think a lot of that, Chris, is down to, as well, like, you know, these guys have all come through in the juniors, you know. Like, I know a lot of them played with Pete as well in the junior programme. And I think that, that sort of made their sort of DNA as a team. That's been built up all those years from the juniors up to the seniors. Yeah, wonderful. Listen, guys, your time's done. It's, it's flown by. Thanks very much for joining us. Mark Richardson, Robert Farmer, and from GBSC, Annette and Alan Petrie. Well, so to the final part of the, the third period, you know, squeaky bomb time, as it were. And I'm joined for this section by Robert Lakovich, Stevie Lee, Someone's had a lockdown haircut and Colin Shields. Uh, Stevie, have you had a lockdown haircut? We'll start with you. Uh, no, you uh, said we weren't allowed to wear a hat, so <laughs> this is what I had to do. No, I did, what, what, what? It, did it a few weeks back. Oh. <laughs> Lacko, it's good look at, don't you think? Yeah, uh, Steve used to have that haircut when he was like 12 years old. So it's nice to see the old Steve, Steve's uh, head back there, yeah. <laughs> Shilty, <laughs> well, welcome. It's great to see you. Uh, you know, it just strikes me that you've probably not played hockey for a, for a year, unlike these guys. Um, how, how are things going for you? Yeah, it was good until the obviously until the lockdown. This is my regular haircut. This isn't a lockdown haircut. So <laughs> when you get to 40, this is the uh, haircut you go with, apparently. But um, yeah, things are good. Just. Uh, Chuck along. Uh, gym's obviously closed, but uh, just trying to do some stuff online and, and stay active and uh, hopefully get some golf back here this week and, and get out and about a bit more. So, apart from that, okay. okay. Brilliant. Uh, Stevie, I'll start with you, and we'll talk about the game in a minute, but but you nearly missed this tournament with your injury. You just managed to get back in and, in contention. I just wonder, you know, how the emotions were of, of having to, like, you know, getting that injury, thinking you might miss out, and then and then making it. Just talk me through that kind of roller coaster ride, Stevie. Uh, I was definitely on edge. Like, obviously, I didn't know if if it'd be fixed in time, and I was waiting for a, a doctor's approval right before the tournament started. So, um, all the coaches were supportive of me, and, and and they hung on and waited until I had an answer. And I was definitely definitely stressed out. I definitely didn't want to miss this one. No, I mean that's what all the boys have said to to you, Colin. I mean as a whole that the drama's to come but you know could you write a better script to, to play a gb game as your final game as a player it was it was remarkable wasn't it yeah it seemed like for the few years before that before of uh, course in hungary it seemed like the two or three years we were just right there and so close to getting to the, to the division below this and then uh having that surreal tournament in Hungary and farmers and Robert scoring that goal to get us to the to the top group and uh, you know quite a way to finish, especially in the last game to come back from 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 down and then uh, to have Benny score the score the overtime goal was quite amazing way to finish up my career. Lacko, it looks like you're in a dungeon or something. Uh... <laughs> yeah, I've been locked away in the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> nice brickwork though, lovely brickwork. Um, oh, I'm just thinking, fake wallpaper. Oh, it's fake. It's not real brickwork, no? No, uh, couldn't afford real bricks. Oh, man. I thought you were in a rustic yeah, setting in a big... I thought get a deal. <laughs> thought you were in a country house somewhere in the middle of nowhere. Um, 
what what strikes me about you know what were the energy levels you know you just played six other games against some of the best players in the world you're late in the third period what, what are the energies like energy levels like as a player um it, it's tough to keep the energy up to be honest but um in those big game situations we've all been there in either the playoff finals or you say like in hungary the previous year you just find it from somewhere it's it's deep within and um these big situations it it's it's not that tough to to find that extra bit of energy stevie did you feel you had france's number in the, the way the momentum went from three nil down to three three did you feel that this this was your game to, for the taking yeah, I think I think the momentum started to take, uh, turn after after Pete took the time out. Um, we took control of the game from that point on. Don't get, get me wrong, friends still still had opportunities, but we coped with it well, and I thought we had uh, the better half of that game. Colin, I touched on the, the final game, and I just want to go back to that. As these seconds are ticking down, is is that in your head? Is it in the head that this is the final time I'll, I'll represent Great Britain, or? Are you just playing the game because it's a game to win? No, I think, um, as you said earlier, I think it was a tough uh, first five or six games for us. Um, you know, going into that game, the way things went, I think, uh, you know, our energy levels and probably, you know, uh, confidence levels were quite low. And then the way the game started, I think, you know, we were quite deflated. But getting one goal back and then two goals back, I think we did find an energy from somewhere uh where we were like hey we're in this game and uh it's right there for us to take and, and you can see at the end we sort of did take most of the play through them and uh we knew we had a chance to win it was just sort of uh you know banking up massive some huge saves and uh some big block shots as you can see in the game and uh you know luckily for us that uh you know ben davies was able to come through with a big goal but i think anyone could have scored the goal and he made an amazing play and jonathan felt prior to that and you can just see how tired they were prior to the to the goal, and and they just came through with the energy just at the end to, to make it to make it work. Yeah, absolutely. I wonder, Stevie, like what what you know. I've touched on this with a lot of the guys throughout the evening. What was the experience like being on the ice with with these, you know, world class players? I was. Uh, I'll be honest with you, Chris. I was quite overwhelmed when I first got there. Like all the media and everything around, I'm not the most uh, social of guys anyway, but. Um, after we got that first game out of the way and we actually played really well um, against Germany, I, I think you kind of set into the tournament and yeah, we belong here. We can actually skate with these and each game we got better and better. Okay, we're, we're, Lacko, I'm going to have to pick on you for a minute. We're just going to watch the period of play that leads to this penalty and then I want to get your thoughts. So we'll just watch this for a moment. Great Britain and France. Great. Here's Trey. Trey pushed off the puck momentarily. Trey with the wraparound. He kept his feet after the pressure from Davy Phillips and Trey using his size at six foot four and 200 pounds. Here is Trey. Lakovic pulls him down. It's going to be a penalty against Lakovic. Here's Bertrand. That's, Bertrand that, I mean, that, that's, that's not a penalty, is it, Lacko? No. I mean, he, he, I think he knew what he was doing. A little bit of embellishment. He kind of got his body between me and the puck and as soon as he looked like as soon as he felt a bit of pressure there he just he took a tumble but um i mean it's a it's a pretty good play by him at that stage in the game they they need a goal and um power play at that stage is, is going to help it's strange though because we've talked a lot this evening how they let a lot go i, I go back again to stevie's hit and we'll talk about that in a minute davy phillips is here i mean a lot was let go really in that game did you not feel yeah, um, so the IIHF refs, they're usually pretty pretty strict with things like sticks in the hands and stuff like that. But for the flow of the game, they generally keep it pretty pretty smooth and keep things going. So, yeah, I was a little disappointed in the call, but I got myself in a, in a bad spot there and ended up taking the penalty. Is it a really frustrating place to be, I guess, in, in that box in, in one of the biggest games? I guess your, your emotions are right in check, aren't they? Yeah, my uh, my heart was going, and I didn't know where to look or whether to watch or not. It was yeah, it was not the best place to be. That's for sure. Didn't matter. We got through it. Stevie, I touched on your hit, uh, and we saw that earlier in the first period. 
you know that that was a, a fabulous hit, and, and Davy had, had got you know done one, one earlier. You know, again, I touch on it. Sometimes at double IHF level, those hits get punished because you know the, the rules are a bit stricter. But it was great to for GB to to be able to use that physical side to, to your strength, wasn't it? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, I mean, we like to play a physical, fast game, anyways, and. I got a chance to make a hit and I saw him drop his head a little bit, stood up at the blue line. And I, I think I was quite lucky not to get a penalty there, to be honest, Chris. Yeah, that was, that was very honest close. of you. Yeah, yeah that very honest of you. Yeah. We'll just pause again now because Bounds is about to make another great save. Back to the alternate captain, Kevin Heckfoy. Here's Rec. Rec battling against Jonathan Phillips. Good stick by Jonathan Phillips. He forces it back to the blue line. Bertrand with a shot blocked by Lee. Lee had it in his feet. He wasn't sure where it was, but a brave block by Stevie Lee. Here's Heck Foy. Heck Foy to Rec. Rec with a shot. Gloved down by Bounds. A really good save from well, Bounds. Well, that was good timing because another block there by you, Stevie, which I'd, I'd forgotten about. Again, that, that typified just everything about GB, wasn't it? You, you throw any part of your body on the line to stop a puck. Absolutely, and every single one of the guys buys in, and it's not just uh, this tournament here, it's the past five or six years, that's the way we play, and everybody will do anything to win, and, and it's great to see, and it's great to be a part of. Colin, I mean, look, the clock's ticking away now, now 3.15, I've touched on it with the other boys, do you feel that, that this is your game, you know, you can turn this game around, do you, do you feel that you've got the upper hand over France with the way you've come back? Yeah, I mean, I think prior to this, I think you, you could see in the play that we were sort of controlling things and getting the better opportunities. But, I mean, they have a great power play, as you can see by the by the highlights, and they have a great team, and, and you can see how they dominated. Uh, Park possession by guys like Stevie and Dave Phillips and, and Ollie and the other guys, Natalie Phillips, did such a great job, and Ben is just standing in there for call. I think uh, we had a lot of confidence in our penalty kill, even against some of those other teams, uh, USA and Canada. Uh, you know, some of the best players in the world and, and you can see those guys just, you know, going down to block shots and, uh, you know, you know, commandments to them for the job they did and, and you can see it obviously pay dividends at the end of the tournament and then uh, come up with a huge kill late in the game. Laka, was the experience everything you thought it would be, you know, in, in Hungary when you realised you were going to go to the top flight, then the groups were announced, you know, was it all that you thought it would be? I don't really know because I don't know what I was really expecting and it like Steve said it didn't really seem real until we got there and then it was like a whole it's a whole different world with all the media and the just the organization of the tournament it was it was completely different so I think a lot of us just went not really knowing what to expect but um it was very professionally run everything was was in order and I mean the great experience but um yeah i think i don't know i don't i don't think we knew what we were expecting to to happen or what it was going to be like just see here some some chances you know just how well, was a big push there from from dallas and i think this is the oh yeah it hits dallas there doesn't it and then the, oh that's the push isn't it but is it davy <laughs> pushes him out of the way animal animal have a good guy <laughs> oh dear i mean there's still dramas to come actually i mean there's a chance for, for gb late on you know uh, which we'll see shortly stevie you touched on it earlier about you saying that you you know you're, you're not the most person who enjoys the media a lot how hard was that because one thing i talk about when people ask me was the fact that you guys would come off the ice and there was a mix zone and and the world's media would want to speak to all of you and i'd say stevie you need to go there colin there laco there bouncy there i mean bouncy seemed to speak to 16 different media people bless him <laughs> um but yeah, yeah. How, how was that you know, how was that you know in intense media sort of um scrutiny was was it kind of, did it make it anything like tougher for you uh yeah i think the first couple of days were definitely uh eye-opening for me personally um, but as the tournament went on, you got used to it. It's like it's like doing anything for a first time. Like once you get used to it, you get out of your comfort zone a little bit. It's it's absolutely fine, and it, it becomes normal. Yeah, I mean, you even had to go through the mix zone 
on, on practice day. I, I mean, I think a few boys tried to sneak off. I mean, literally, I mean, I, I can speak from, from my point of view. You know, I was being, yeah, there you go. I was being told by, you know, by the, the people there, every game you must come off, you know, through the Zamboni door, and, and you did. But even at practice, but I mean, but that kind of sums it up that, that, that GB had other nations reporters at practice watching your practice. And, and that's how the, the bombs away thing got famous on, on TSN, wasn't it? Uh, which, which was fantastic because the whole hockey world fell in love with, with Great Britain. These these crazy GB guys who threw the pups in the air and, and let it hit on the head. I mean, it, it was fantastic. Uh, I mean, where did that start? Anyone remember? <laughs> That's a cute thing for sure. Was yeah. it? <laughs> I can't remember. It must be a few years ago, though. I can't, I can't remember when it started, but it was definitely in Hungary. And then, is that in Belfast? Was that a thing the year before? Could have been before. I, I think it was at least Belfast, wasn't it? Maybe before. I'm not sure. Anyway, I can't listen. Really remember. Yeah. It, we, we've, we've got a chance here. Uh, we'll just pause because I forget this chance. It's coming up very right now. Um, GB could have scored right at the end. So let's. Uh, Watch this in a the moment. There must be one more more face-off to come. I mean, I'll go to you, uh, Lacco. Um, maybe try and get round Are you are you dreading overtime with on the horizon, or are you excited by it? Um, I think you're excited by it because it's you know that feeling like golden goal. Just you are the better team essentially if you win that. So I think it's I think it's exciting and it it brings out the best in players. Yeah, OK, well, let's pause because we're about to see his face off and we're about to see a very late chance where GB went closer than I thought uh, to winning. There's a bit of pushing and shoving. There's Laker having a word. But we will see in a moment. Stevie, are you an overtime man? Do you, do you, do you thrive on that? Absolutely, especially on that stage. It's, it's something special. It's a massive challenge. And like Lax said, it, it's very, very exciting. You don't really think about the negatives in, in those situations. Oh, we're going to lose or anything like that. Like your mindset has to be, we're, we're going to win. And uh, as you can see later on in this game, that, that happens. Yeah, there's a chance for Lake and there's a chance for Davis. I forget how, how close it went. What are your thoughts, Colin, just before we finish? What are your thoughts just with, with overtime looming? Yeah, I mean, I, I was definitely nervous. I didn't think... At that stage where I was in my career or my sort of place on a team that I was going to get out there in overtime. But uh, I think you're, you're maybe, you know, just trying to stay ready in case you do get the tap. And um, if I did get the tap, you're, you're hopefully ready to try and probably play well defensively. I think at that point you're probably thinking, you know, don't make a mistake or, or things like that. Because we, we worked so hard to get back in the game. And I think, um, and everyone deserved to be there and definitely deserved to, have a chance to get to overtime and as much as you want to score the goal i think um it was definitely a nerve-wracking you know butterflies in the stomach type moment brilliant well i think even more tense at times are ahead of course with overtime to come but guys we've come to the end of our time thanks for joining us for the, for the last bit of the third period robert lakovich stevie lee and colin shields great to talk to you And so to overtime, and, and what an overtime it was. These are going to be a thrilling 10 minutes or so. There's the story of the game. GB down from 3-0 back to 3-3. And for this overtime, I'm joined by Captain Jonathan Phillips, netminder Ben Bounds, and the man who scored the goal for GB to win it, Ben Davis. Uh, Jonathan, I'll, I'll come to you first of all. And I wonder what's being said at this stage. You know, I think there was a two or three minute break just a, a TV break, I guess it was, or something like that. What's being said on the bench? Are there instructions, or is there not much being said? Yeah, it was just keep going. I mean, like we, it was such a roller coaster of a game, um, and you know, from three nil down to three three. But we had so much momentum that third period. Well, the second half of the second period, and then um, you know, the whole whole of the third. So. It was just keep going, it, you know. Things are things are going our way. We're we're, we're playing our. What best are you looking at? You're looking up. You're looking. I guess you're looking okay. at the clock there, were you? I think there you go. You're oh, looking at the clock. Uh, probably, yeah. Probably seeing uh, yeah. if I could see myself on there. <laughs> what what a different what a different overtime from from twelve months ago. The overtime before where 
it was just a bit of fun. I mean, you couldn't got more of a contrast, could you, from Hungary when, when it was it meant everything, and uh, when sorry, when Hungary where it, you're already up, and to this one where it meant everything. Yeah, no, exactly. I, I mean, up in Hungary, it was, you know, we 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 were, we were already celebrating before uh, hmm. over time, and then this one, it was, um, yeah. I mean, obviously we were nervous. It was, but it, it, I mean, what a what a stage to be on, and 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 I mean, you know, this is this is what scripts are. You know why scripts are written. Um, it really was one of those moments. Ben, I wonder about you. You're going to play a key part in these next few minutes. Are you a are you a nervous man now, or are you excited? Are you like I want the puck to come to me. I want to make a great save, or are you like I don't want the puck anywhere near me? I just take it as it comes. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. I'm, uh, no, I just just clear minds. Just I'm sure all other guys are the same. As, as soon as you start thinking about these kind of things. That's what kind of uh, messes you up in these situations. So now for me, it would just uh, stay calm, stay focused, and just get on with it. Ben Davis, what's your feeling going into overtime? How are your nerves at this time in the game? Well, like John said, we had uh, a lot of momentum coming into this overtime. So I think uh, a lot of the guys uh, do well on the park, like you see Pearls and, and Oki just spinning around now, just trying to create some space. and. And we got a lot of guys in the team that can make stuff happen. So I think uh, just hopefully try and play strong defensively and, and hope we get a few chances to, to tuck one in. But I'm, I'm, it was uh, it was definitely a nerve-wracking time. But, uh, yeah, it was uh, a, a fun game to be a part of, that's for sure. Well, let's watch a bit of it now because before the goal comes, there's some big chances for France where guys throw all sorts of bodies on the line and, and bits of their body. And I mean, there's a bit of a chance here for GB, but then play does break down. So let's just pause and, and watch a bit of Aaron Murphy's uh, commentary, which will come very soon indeed. I, I thought they were going to break away there with a chance. Um, I, I just wonder, Jonathan, and we'll just watch this replay here. Just a slight collision on the boards. Wonder whether that could have been a penalty. It wasn't. Doesn't really matter. Uh, I, I just wonder, Jonathan, how, how you know, is there much conversation between guys on the bench and on the ice, or is it to a minimum at this stage? Well, I mean, talk's always key, especially in three on three, and, and you know, it's a, um, it's a situation of, of don't give away the puck. You know, you, it, the. In those situations, there's so much space. You've got to, you know, you've got to know where what guys are doing, where people are going, and who's got who. So talk is key. So yeah, you know, always lot lots of communication. Um, I think that's one one good thing our, our our team's been good at these last few years, where we at, we've had success, is our talk on and off the ice has has, has, has been great. Yeah, the, the we'll pause because these are the chances I was mentioning. So let's hear Aaron's commentary. Heckfoy down on the left side. He's got Bozon as the trailer, but Hammond's right there. Hammond has to be careful. A little move there, and the puck is right there for Heckfoy. Trying to jam it home as Claro and Bounds is down, holding his line. Scary moment there. I mean, I mean Bounds, do, do you know where that puck is? You're, you're just lying flat, and you stuck your hand out. Do you know where that puck is? Yeah, and you're aware. The scariest thing for me, though, is when Stevie falls on my ear, rips the pad clean off my leg, so I, I can't move. The ref has no idea, so... I literally can't do a thing. You can see my pad there just flapping around. Um, but yeah, I knew what we were and I was just thinking, like, just shovel it into me. And luckily they did, and we got a nice little, uh, nice little stoppage so I could reattach my pad. I mean, that, that's amazing. I mean, you, you know, you're in such a difficult position, and you still managed to, to, to get that hand out. And, you know, such fine margins, if you'd lifted a bit higher, I mean, it, it could have been different, but you, you got the, the arm out and, and, and made that save. I mean, I think from this, this next play, uh, th there's going to be a, another chance. Ben, did you did you feel that, that, you know, that was a tough 30, 40 seconds, wasn't it, you know, in terms of what they were throwing at you, friends? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, you, you could feel that pressure ramping up, but those are those moments that you want to play in from a kid and... You always dream of having these impacts like like we do here, all the guys that are on the ice. So um, yeah, it gets a little bit crazy, but um, yeah. To be fair though, if, if I'm being honest, I thought once we'd faced off, that'd be it. Then we'd we'd go down and maybe give it up, uh, give them a little bit of pressure to deal with, and that that puck takes an horrible little bounce of a Benny's stick, and they get another little chance. So that that way kind of shocked at the system, and you'll see as I, as I poke it away. It, You'd think it'd be a breather, and it goes straight back to their other guy, who just 
kind of relentless, but luckily it's typical Brits and compete, compete, compete from everyone. We managed to weather it. Well, well, the big moments coming up before we see it, Jonathan, it is true, isn't it? That you at the face off said to Benny to do exactly what he did. That's true, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I um, just noticed how your D man was over on the boards. So just said, yeah, well, let's, let's watch it for me. Strange. Turning down the left side, knocked off the puck by Czech Yakfili. Gets up out from Davis. Oh! Davis! Davis! The goal in the Switzerland! Great print! Hang on! Well, well, there you go. I thought you'd have a bit more joy. I was the yeah, only it's a one bit of a celebration. <laughs> it's, uh, um, it still gives you goosebumps. I think we've all seen see her a few that. times. Watched, yeah, so many times, but it still gives you goosebumps, man. It's, it's unreal, isn't it? Um, OK, well, I'll, I'll try and get through as many thoughts as possible. Uh, ben, tell me your thought process when that puck comes to you. Well, first of all, I'm just trying to get up the ice and support John. I never know what's going to happen. And, and he makes a, a few. Obviously, he bounces off a of D-man, makes a great play around the, the flurry. And uh, he just puts it on a plate for me. So I, I, my job was just to get up in the play and, and, and make sure I had a, a chance on net. And obviously... Uh, it, it worked out real good, and then it's just trying to celebrate with the boys as hard as possible. It, it's amazing to, to, to watch again. I mean, it absolutely is. Let's just pause a minute and, and watch it, you know, again. Like, I'm I mean, all on a, my own. It's a great... I mean, what uh, the D man just not tracked you back, Ben? I don't. I mean, what? no, it's the, the, this next guy that John pulls it around. He would have uh, yeah. been effectively my guy, I guess. So Jono took so two guys yeah, out of the play. John obviously, Jono realizes straight away, yeah. Well, well that's, yeah, as soon as Fleury came to me, it, I just, I knew as long as Ben had, had, had followed up somewhere, he should be wide open. Because, I mean, when that, the first guy hit me and I managed to get back up, he'd slid in, in, into the corner. And then when I saw him just come charging straight towards me, I just thought, oh my God, what are you doing? This is perfect. So and Ben made a great play. He was in, you know, the exact right spot, timing-wise. Uh, Bouncy, how, how did you see the play develop? You got one of the best views on the ice. I couldn't believe it. I mean, when Benny won that face-off so clean, and you see Jono go down. I mean, I didn't know that he could dish like that. To be fair, is um, thought Jono would end up falling and flying into boards or something, and then he makes his pass. So it surprised me. Never mind, France. But, um, I did. Oh, I mean, I'm still shocked to be honest. <laughs> I mean, this, this is that video of us from the that someone got from the stands where David falls off at bench and you see me skating up ice yeah. like I've never skated before. I look like I'm on those uh, <laughs> yeah. blue skates in a public session. But that's how excited I were. I mean, you know, I want to ask all of you, and, I, and I've touched on this with, with guys before. W what's a bigger moment? I'll start with you, Ben Davis. What, what's a bigger moment? The, the game against Hungary and the way you want that to get to the top flight or, or what you did we're watching now. If you, if I said to you, you've got to choose, which one would you choose? It's a tough question because obviously this, this France game doesn't come along without the, the Hungary one. Um, I, 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 think, I think all along we knew we could kind of beat France. Obviously, it took a hell of an effort in the end. But uh, I think uh, the Hungary kind of... Uh, Took us a little bit more by surprise. We obviously beat Slovenia and then went from there. And, and I don't think, like, obviously we hoped we could could get gold. But, uh, yeah, I think that one obviously is a massive step for us. And uh, But, I don't know, personally, I, I obviously, the, the France game for me, coming back from 3-0 and, and being in the top division and playing a, alongside all the, all those brilliant players, uh, that, that for me. But, uh, like I say, we can't do the one without the other, so... Mm, I guess this is Benny getting a man of the match. I never did see that. I was standing in a mix zone, I think, waiting for you, for you guys to, to come off and Bouncy to do his 102nd interview of the of the tournament. And we touched on that earlier with some of the guys. You know, how, how was that media attention, Bouncy? A little bit crazy. I mean, um, by the end of it, you actually enjoy it. But I mean, you used to, you see the statement at the end of a game. I mean. <laughs> uh, the amount there are sweat and everything. The hardest bit for me was staying hydrated while we're doing all these interviews. I mean, I, th I can't. I think it was after that Germany game. It took me a little while to recover because I'd, I'd gone through the full round without taking any fluids on board and all that kind of stuff. And 
it sounds a bit stupid, but uh, it it took its toll a little bit. So we're kind of getting used to all that, and yeah, just once you found your once you found your feet and you you have started getting used to it, it just becomes a bit more natural. And uh, it, like I say, you enjoy it by the end of it. And it, it were kind of strange coming back after six weeks of being with everyone, six weeks of having this routine and all this attention and being like in Slovakia. I mean, they, they made you feel like superstars a lot of the time. And you come back to yeah. to Barry Bedos here. Uh, <laughs> and no one has a clue who you are. I mean, I mean that's, I mean, I mean that that's true, Jado, isn't it? I mean, you know, you had armed vehicles taking you to and from the rink. It, it really was something else, wasn't it? You know, where you'd, you'd got that convoy almost, and and the security and the the whole tournament. It was just something completely on a different level, wasn't it? Yeah, massively. And you know, obviously, we're not used to all that that kind of stuff. We we knew they weren't really there for us. They were. There to protect everyone else, probably from us. Um, but it was, it was, uh, it really was something special. And, and, and so, like, like, what a story to, to be able to tell when, when, when we're older to our kids and grandchildren that, you know, that we played in this. It was, it really was something dreams are made of. I, I never saw this. Is this player of tournaments or something, guys? Is it? Yeah, three best players Bounds, Lee, and, and Lee and Hammond. Never picked up on that for the first time. I'm seeing that. You need to do your job properly next time, Ellie. <laughs> yeah, that's a very good point. That's a good point. I think at this point, I was trying to get a press release out to say you guys have stayed up. And then, as I say, and I'm joking aside, the, uh, yeah, yeah. And, and the intro, oh, yeah. And, and, and producer Dave makes a good point. The crazy intro where I got a bit excited. Uh, and also the world's media wanted to talk to you guys. Let's pause now for the national anthem. spine tingling as well can, can you get much better moments in in hockey ben davis no i don't think so i think i think that whole tournament uh was a, a first for all of us a massive experience and and uh, obviously the, the 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 way it ended up and and being able to stay up for the next year um i, th I think it was a, a good stepping stone for one for gb and and uh, yeah the experience was was out of this world really Ben Bounds, Bouncy, do you remember much about like the celebrations and as we joked about, you had to do about 60 interviews and I think you were late to get back to the room. Do you, do you have much memory about those special times on ice when you're with the guys and just soaking in what you've achieved? Um, I don't know, we're a bit of a blur all this kind of thing to be fair. It were, um, as I got older I like to kind of take in when we win stuff but this, this is we're just kind of surreal. I mean if you'd have told us it would have been that happy after coming seventh in a tournament and, and winning one game, uh, I'd, have, I'd have laughed at you when I was younger. It's, it's, it's just weird. But I can remember getting into that room uh, later than everyone else and obviously the reaction that the guys gave me were, were really nice. And um, I think my biggest memory from that is going to that club after and uh, having a few drinks. And obviously the game came on the big screen while the French team were upstairs eating their food. And I think it took about 10 seconds for... Uh, Farmer to start screaming at TV before all French team left. <laughs> so, some some great mem memories. I mean, as captain, John, I, you know, we'll leave the, the final word for you. And then, you know, the, the journey, the you know, look at the great fans there. The, I see fans' faces that have followed you from when you're in in tier three. You know, um, the, the journey that you've been on has just been remarkable, hasn't it? Yeah, I mean, it, you know, we've had some tough time years, you know, years ago, and and you know, we were always so close and just kept, you know, missing out on that gold medal and could never get out of that, you know, tier three group. Um, and then, and then, it, you know, we just started to hit our stride and 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 find our identity and uh, the way we've grown as a as as a team has been has been quick and and and, and huge and. Um, Honestly, like you speak to most of the boys, and they can't wait till the end of the season to 
to you know go away with the national team is is it's always been such a good time and um you know you've got 20 odd guys all pulling in the same direction um and we've known each other for so long so it you know it, it really is a a little family i thought corey might have smiled there but but maybe not maybe that was just the false he, alarm there he, he had wind <laughs> he, he, he hadn't burped him <laughs> but but it's it's amazing you can you can see what it, it means to 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 you know just the guys and and you know there's the the famous chant which i don't think we can say on on television um but but there's you guys singing it that went viral as well uh and, and again and, and and you know Jono, just just finally i mean b before we finish what what is it like to to just to lead this this group as as, as a group of people Obviously, it's an absolute honour and privilege, and um, but it, I mean, you know, I, I've always said the same thing. There's there's so many leaders in in so many different ways on that team, and everybody. I think that's where our success has come from. Um, everybody pulling their own weight and and you know, kind of being um, being responsible for um, their actions and their games, and 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 just. Attitudes. It, it's, it, it really is a, a, a great team to be a part of, and uh, you know that's definitely one thing I'll uh, I'll always miss. I think once when, when, once I'm done. Yeah, absolutely. Great words, and this is a, a nice way to end. Looking at all the people who, who made it happen and made it possible. What an eventful few weeks it was in, in everybody's lives. So listen, guys, thanks so much for joining us, Ben Davis, Ben Bounds, and Jonathan Phillips, and thanks to everyone over the last few hours for, for joining us on the journey. It, it's been brilliant. Brought back a lot of emotions, I'm sure, for so many supporters. What a journey it's been for Great Britain ice hockey from the third tier to get to the, the top tier. And maybe, yeah, there wasn't any tournament this year, but Belarus and, and Latvia next year. And who knows what Great Britain can do in a year's time. What a journey it's been. Thanks so much for joining us.